And we are here. We're good to go. We just dodged a sound from from Derek's bird in the background, whose name I always forget. But we're here. We're uh, Adventures Log Lagging. We're playing Best Left Berry tonight, a fantasy horror adventure about hair. That yeah, that that's that's the summary. Uh, let's see. We play a bunch of different games on the internet on different days. Uh, we play a lot of free league games. Mondays, we play like uh, Alien and Vason and stuff. And then we also play a little Mutant Year Zero and other things on the weekend. So um, this is going to be a part two of a small adventure that might be, we might finish it tonight. And it might take one more adventure. It sort of depends upon all of y'all. Uh, so could end up being a three-parter. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but before we dive into like a more robust summary, why don't we just do a quick uh, go through of people's characters? So who are you? Uh, what's like your archetype? And uh, give us something interesting about your character to, to help us visualize them or something like that. So uh, Long, you're up first. Yeah, yes, I'm playing Leon the Dastard. And my failed career was a storyteller. Um, what I look like? I forget, but I know I have a pink scarf. Yes, I remember the pink scarf. Yeah. I like to think that Leon was once like in the library, like a public library, and he was doing like story time with kids and he would like read a page and hold it up and show the picture, but he just like read too fast or it was like really nasty artwork or something and he got in trouble and fired or whatever. Is that is that accurate? We'll make it accurate. That's okay. canon. That's canon now. All right, cool. Uh let's go on over to Ashley. Okay, uh, I'm playing Sophie. Uh, she dresses like a nun. Um, stop laughing at me, Jeff. <laughs> it's, just and fun. it's just been fun. It's been a day. Uh, Christ. <laughs> She's She eats human meat. That's her thing now. Um, I've taken quite a few um, consequences, I guess you could say. Afflictions. Um, I'm brittle-minded. So that's a new one I got the last time we played to where um, any future grip, grip checks I make are going to be against odds, um, which is going to add some spice to my life. But she's bland. She just dresses like a nun. She's very she's got like the habit or whatever on. So you don't, I don't even know what color her hair is. She doesn't anymore either. Um, and yeah, that's that's Sophie. I think it's kind of cool that they let you keep the habit, even though you failed at being I stole a nun. it. Oh, right on. There you go. You stole from a nunnery. I like it. Um, yeah. Okay. Did you know that they're making a Sister Act 3? I mean, speaking of nuns, Justin, have you heard this? Uh, news to me, but I could not be more excited. I am pretty excited. Sister Act 2 back in the habit. I want to be your daughter. I want to be old Whoopi. It is. It is old Whoopi. Yeah. I, uh, I maintain that I think the sequel... Uh, title for Sister Act 2 Back in the Habit is one of the greatest sequel names of all time because it's Back in the Habit like I'm getting back to it but then there's the double play because Habit you know has has an, ex an extra meaning so I think I think no no one cares everyone's kind of in a bad mood tonight so <laughs> we're just having days Jeff, okay? having days like Ashley's you know kitchen almost burnt down Derek <laughs> ate some mcdonald's beforehand so he's not feeling too great my iced tea has, has artificial lemon in it and it tastes like ass and i don't like it so this could be a really bad stream i don't know We're, we'll, we'll try we'll try uh we'll just get creative you <laughs> we, know it'll we'll, be fine it'll be great. we'll just we'll just murder everything it'll be great just take our take our vengeance out on the various npcs and shit we come across uh let's go to the bottom row uh derek who are you playing so I am playing Horian. Uh, I am an outcast. Uh, used to be a knight uh, for the king, but had some uh, had some stuff thrown on me, and so they kicked me out. Used to be a tallyman, kept records. They the king failed, blamed it on me. So now I don't like people, and I hit stuff with a really big sword. Um, and yeah, I'm just a really big guy with a big sword. Nice gold star for having a nice little story and such. I like it. It's nice. It's very cool. Uh, don't get too attached. Uh, all right. Moving on over, uh, Melissa, who are you playing? Uh, so I am playing Katrak. Uh, archetype is a dwarf. Failed career is a messenger. Um, so I see her as the distractible type that likes to kind of wander and meander around. Um, some of her abilities, she is a pack mule. Um, and she's also, she can like eat pretty much anything and it doesn't really bother her. She's got lead belly 
um, television and strong hearted. So she, interestingly though, when I rolled her up, she has absolutely no brawn. So that was the fun, you know, nice little thing with her. Nice. In this game, when you roll characters, you roll your stats randomly. There's only three stats. There's brawn, wits, and will. One of them gets a two, one of them gets a one, and one of them gets a zero. So on the bright side, you can, when you get advancements, uh, you can actually get extra brawn or extra will as your advancements. It's pretty simple to increase your stats. So there's always that. Uh, moving on over, we got Justin and his beautiful Cleveland Browns hat. Yeah. So uh, I am playing the happy go lucky small folk uh, O'Hare. I forget his first name already. Was it Jimmy? Jimmy. Jimmy O'Hare. Yeah. And uh, I used to be a roofer, and I'm just a guy who's having a great time. That's all it is. Yeah. And uh, I appreciate you for you, Justin. I'm just having a good time. We have a little people. It's a great experience. There's Chilio. nothing bad going on. And I got tiny hands. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Uh, okay. Uh, so one bad thing happened to O'Hare last time that we didn't address before we, we left stream is that O'Hare almost died. He got reduced to zero HP in a fight. And whenever you get reduced to zero HP in this game, you, you kind of flip a coin. And so behind the scenes, I rolled like a D100. Don't worry. You're good because, like, it's a 50 50 chance on, uh, like, for, to die. So, like, if you, if the, if it lands on the way you want it to, you live and you just remain unconscious. If it lands the other way, then you're dead. Uh, so it, you got that, but it also meant that you had to draw a, a, a couple consequences. One of them was an injury and one of them was an affliction. On the bright side, you're, you, you got, you got off the, you, you kind of got off scot-free with the injury because you got the no effect injury. So you dodged that, but you did in fact take an affliction uh, long for the road. Have you, have, have you read through this yet? This long for the road uh, affliction? No. Okay. So in this game, there are a couple different kinds of afflictions. There's um, and one of them is called a character flaw. A character flaw is really just there to help, help kind of dictate role play to some degree or help kind of flavor it. And it's a way for you to start, like tweaking or changing the way your character plays. Um, so there's no real mechanical negative here necessarily, unless it makes sense. Uh, but you got long for the road. So small folk with long for the road develop a deep love for travel and adventure. They spend so long adventuring that they lose their care for the home life many small folk adore so much and care instead for short, exciting lives of cheap thrills and quick fame. Mundane things no longer hold any interest to them, and they often waste time thinking about the next adventure while on the current one. They are characterized by short attention spans, skittishness, and daydreaming. So that's how you have to, you know, like, that's like a way that you have to start incorporating that into your role play. Fit in what I do. I yeah, mean. I think it actually fits particularly well for you. You just have to lean into it a little bit more. And the thing is, is like, in this game, if you don't do it, like, I can start like docking you grip and stuff. Like, it's in the rules and shit. Anyway, there's that. Uh, so let's dive into the summary. Um, you all are a cryptic and crew. You've been traveling north. You've been sent north by your cryptic, cryptic and company manager, uh, that in charge. <laughs> hey, Christopher, how's it going? Um, on our spoiler alert, on our alien game this past week, they blew up their ship. It was pretty great. Dang. Happened out of nowhere. Didn't think it was going to happen. And I have no idea what the fuck we're going to do <laughs> with our campaign now because we blew I'm up their ship. floating in strip. an escape yeah, pod. Just, yeah. yeah. Not only that, but the the party is split. Oh, God. I, just, I don't even want to. Never mind. I'm not going to get off topic. Anyway. So, uh, anyway. I feel like every one of our games now should have something explode and like just ruin my life. Uh, so let's see. Last time around, you all were a freaking company. You were sent north, and you were kind of in, uh, sent to this village of Bromwell. You're, you're you're looking for leads, like little tombs and crypts and places that you can go to find treasure, because that's what your company does: is you go to these old places of the world and you try to loot them for treasure. Um, and they said, "Don't come back." empty-handed you better find something and bring it back and so far you guys haven't found anything however when you arrived in this this valley uh, around you know within which bromwell sits um you found that there's some strange stuff afoot uh does anyone remember some of the strangeness anyone there's a lot of hairy things there's a lot of hairy things that's right so you the first one of the first images you saw was an old woman who was fishing for frogs but those frogs were covered with hair with like this silver hair uh, you also saw like certain other places hair just kind of fell out of the sky. 
Um, Your organs had hair growing out of them, which I found exactly. in my dissection. It was inside of them. The hair was inside of them growing out. Almost had a, almost like it had a mind of its own in some way. Uh, you got to the village of Bromwell. Um, you heard about something weird going down by the graveyard uh, outside of town. So you went and you, you, take, you took a look at that late at night, and you saw that there there's all these these you know all this hair all over the place, and these people rose up like hair puppets, and you all fought them and set the graveyard on fire. Um, that's where we almost lost Jimmy O'Hare, uh, which is honestly he didn't know we were playing a mission a mission about hair. He just named himself Jimmy O'Hare. It was like perfect synergy, uh, but uh, we almost lost him. But you saved him. You killed some hair puppets. You came back. You told some folks about the fact that you desecrated their graveyard where all their loved ones were buried. Uh, some some of the village folk didn't really respond too well. Uh, but yeah, along the way, you also ran into a uh, a ghost a ghost ghostly ram skull who was talking about the grottos and how they like where where they lived was being overrun by something and like there he's off scouting some other other places for his fellow ghost people to live uh and then um then you also heard a couple you also have a couple other leads actually so you've heard about the, the grottos you've heard about um a place called ramshead hill where there's like it's like kind of like a Stonehenge area where like all the sheep are sort of strangely flocking towards it in a way. Um, and you also heard that there's a giant creature that flies in the sky and sheds hair all over the ground. So Silas. Yeah. So anyway, uh, did I miss anything? Y'all y'all caught up? We good? Mm-hmm. All right. So let's get ahead. Oh, hair wasn't feeling too well. He's been coughing a lot lately. That is true. He woke up this morning. Uh after you had stayed the night uh, in the stables, I think you were. I can't remember. But uh, you woke up and he coughed up a fur ball, which I think he tucked away and put in his back. Uh, but okay. Um, you also like investigated like this temple area. There was a man there with a baby who was getting drunk. And then you told him about like how you, how, like he said his wife has recently died. Then, then you said you set the graveyard on fire. Then he ran away really quickly. Good times. Um, so let's, let's, let's start up. You have a, you have a couple places to go. We're doing like a hex crawl. If you all haven't, if you all forgot about this, I'll switch us over for a moment here. Um, but we are currently still in the village of Bromwell right now where that blue flag. You have heard that off to the east on a kind of a rocky hill, uh, there is a place called Ramshead Hill. That's, that's the Stonehenge place where all the weird stuff's happening with the sheep. Uh, you also know that the grottos are somewhere to the north northwestish but you're not entirely sure exactly where that is uh but you have a couple places to go so it's up to you um it's the it's the village you're in the village it's it's morning you just finished your breakfast people are starting to mill about there's rumors going around that some some crew came in and desecrated the graveyard you also hear that people have managed to salvage some of that there's other others that are weeping and crying about it so talk amongst your stells uh, and all of you would have seen O'Hare coughing up a furball so it's morning time what do y'all want to do <clears throat> I believe we were looking for something we were going to go see Noggin so oh, Noggin said... Noggin was the name of like the, the ghosty person yeah mm. the skull right yeah we're going to go to the grotto because I think it linked up with the hair puppets okay yep all right uh, and you know, again, that's kind of off somewhere to the north northwest area. You're not 100 percent sure exactly where it's at, um, but you have like a general, a general idea of the direction you want to go. Is there anything you want to do in in town before you head out? No, I can't think of anything. Okay, do we need? Uh, we're not able to like buy items, right? Yeah, you have. I mean, you. I would say you. You all. All of you who participated in the last one would have some money uh, where you could buy some some basics. Uh, O'Hare wasn't there for the last for our last adventure, but we're not playing some big campaign. But you did get you did get rewarded with some some cash. So if there's something basic that you're looking for, we can do that. Is there something you have in mind that you're looking to buy? Uh, I was going to see if I could buy uh, the it was an armor the um plate armor plate i was sure if i could trade that with trade in my basic armor whatever money we had and then potentially like some equipment that i don't use okay um 
So there is, I mean, if you recall, Bromwell is a fairly run down, uh, dilapidated oh, right. place, but there is a blacksmith. Um, so you, you head on over and you hear the ting, ting, as they're mostly working on tools and things. You don't really see, um, like, you know, this whole array of weapons, but there are some here and there. Um, why don't you go ahead, uh, and roll kind of a will check just to see, uh, how you hit it off with this, uh. Uh, with this individual as they come come out there they're big heavy set dude big old arms hairy hairy arms but like you know normally hairy uh but he's got the All sleeves right. rolled up big old apron um i have to roll against the odds when i make a wits check to interact with an npc okay go for it because i'm not not a people person <laughs> no worries okay wow um, even with the against the odds uh something about the cut of your jib maybe you just look like a a rough cut kind of individual and they do too a guy oh thank you chrissy for them bits um but you see this guy comes up ah what are you looking for plate mail oh i haven't had a mate plate mail in ages not for a while we used to have a fairly big strong load of folk you know barracks and such but uh they went uh they went moving on but uh, I think I got something round here somewhere. Hang on one moment. <laughs> and he, you see him start just going through like this big old pile of junk. Um, and so he picks it up, takes a look at it. It's this big clumsy couple of pieces. Uh, Perfect, because like, uh, that's that was the flavor text of my character. Is that because I was a knight, but I lived in the woods? Like my plate armor just kind of fell apart, so I'll just take the good bits and uh, stuff them into mine. If that's how it works. Okay, <laughs> and this will probably take like whatever whatever you had left over um, from like plate mail is not inexpensive, so whatever you had left over, you basically just burnt it all. Okay. Uh, so and they'd like and maybe you like kind of trade in like okay, I'll, you know, as part of the way to lower the price, you give them like the current kind of. No, yeah, I was going to give the basic armor mm -hmm. that I got, um, and then if there's anything else I can trade, um, I have, let's see, uh, the bullseye lantern um, and the heater shield. Okay. Uh, so I would say, yeah, I mean, I would say you can you can trade in your basic armor, and they'd probably be okay with that. And between what, because you all collected a bunch of crystals and such and probably sold that stuff pretty uh, pretty well in our last adventure, so... You would probably have a, a little bit of coin left over that you can probably make this purchase, no problem. Cool. Okay. Anybody else uh, doing anything in town? Ketrick would actually like to look for a. Um, there's a book of history. Okay. That I see in the items, um, so I'm looking to um, find some book of history or folklore and just see if there's any type of stories having to do with hair. And just this kind of predicament that we find ourselves in. You have there. the book of history or you're trying to acquire a book trying of history? Trying to acquire. Okay, same thing. Roll basic witch check here just to see as you ask around out. You don't really see a grandiose library anywhere. Um, but 11. while you're getting your breakfast in the morning at the uh, at the inn, you do, uh, you do manage to talk uh, or overhear that there's something of a scholar in the area, kind of retired... You hunt them down, you kill them, and you take all their stuff. No, you hunt, you you find them, you go talk to them a bit, um, and again, you were since you were in the last adventure, I'll say you have enough you have enough coin to potentially um, to potentially buy something off them if you're looking to carry this stuff. But you meet uh, a woman by the name of Chastain, and she's this uh, kind of old miserly woman. She's got a big hump back and. She's got these big heavy furs that she wears in the morning. She sits down, has some tea with you, and she talks history. Um, but uh, as you're going through the history book and as you're talking to her, you don't, yeah, you don't really learn. Uh, is this, this doesn't seem like a something that's been documented before. Um, there's nothing ten years ago, fifty years ago, none of this mm -hmm. concept. So this is this does seem somewhat recent. Um, however, uh, the scholar does talk about <laughs> poor Justin. The the scholar does talk about how um, this this hair thing has definitely coincided 
with the appearance of the flying creature. So this flying creature, it's 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 they all coincide. Like she suspects that they're somehow connected, that one connects to the other. Um, because even though that creature doesn't seem to be too aggressive towards Bromwell and they don't seem to go around like swooping down and like taking villagers or anything like that, um, they do shed a lot. <laughs> and a lot of the hair just sort of falls down from the sky. No. Um, but something it, something's connected. Okay. And is there any history about the dragon? Um, hmm. Okay. You rolled what? 11 on your wit check? Mm-hmm. Um, Okay. Let me think about that here. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's, I mean, there's history of dragons. So you get your kind of basic history. And so effectively, like the lesson that you're kind of in part, it's imparted to you is that when gods kind of dabble around in creation, right? When they break the laws of heaven or when they try to like create things outside of like the norm or outside of like what's accepted or they push the boundaries of creation, that's how dragons have been born. And um, dragons have a, uh, they're a fairly obstinate creature as a result. Um, But um each and in, each into themselves has their own personality, obviously. But they, mm-hmm. they're kind of a, they're very powerful creatures, obviously. Um, godly, some might even say cursed in some fashion. Okay. I will thank her for her time and her chat. You got it, dude. She gives you a thumbs up as you walk out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, dragon headed, not pig headed. That's a good idea. All right. Uh, anybody else doing anything before they want to take off uh, and go explore? And no, I'm ready. Anybody else? Just I'm ready for adventure all the time. <laughs> out of here. Okay. Uh, so you guys are headed west, right? Like northwestish. Yeah. Yeah. Let me roll. All right. So these hexes takes they're not. Too far. This isn't like a, a huge valley, but it might take about an hour or so to cross. But um, you you swoop down the ridge, if you recall. Uh, Bromwell is on a bit of a ridge, and then there's a small kind of swale. Uh, the graveyard is is built, you know, within it to some degree. But you also remember that when you were at the graveyard, you saw that there were trees and stuff in the distance, and you're kind of heading in that direction. Uh, let me just do a quick roll. Um, the weather for the day has been a little overcast, a little cloudy, uh, a little cold in some in some cases. Uh, but you start moving through uh, what looks like a small forest. Uh, the trees are kind of scattered and withered. Um, there's some distance. It's not a it's not a very dense forest. There's a lot of separation between them. You see these fairly large what might be oak trees. Um, as you're as you're moving about, you notice that um, they they have got a peculiar look to them because like all of them almost look like they're just decorated in tinsel. You see like these little things like these this this colorful like silvery white droopings uh, on various branches. Um, and I think at this point you would probably be suspicious of that, and you would look up and you realize it just looks like these huge swaths of hair uh, that are are mixed up within the branches themselves. Um, after about a good half an hour walk through the forest itself, you, you hear the sounds of voices. Uh, you hear the sounds of uh, almost like, almost like a hammer being smacked and some cursing and such. And then you hear a thunk, thunk, as if somebody is, is, is sort of shooting and you look as you start to emerge from around this, this boulder and this, this small vegetation, you can see that there's this cart, that sitting off near a, a tree stump that's covered in, in mushrooms, the stump that is, and it's kind of broken. It looks like there's some sort of uh, some sort of problem with the cart itself. You've got two folks that are hammering away, looking like they're trying to fix it. And you can see that the cart from this distance is, is kind of, it's filled um, with, you th- it, it looks like more hair maybe. You're not sure. It's, it's hard to see. 
Uh, but you also notice that there's like several others that are lingering about this large tree, some of which are like eating food. Others are shooting uh, crossbow quarrels right into the, uh, the trunk of the tree. Um, you have heard some rumors about poachers and such in the area. Uh, but as of right now, they haven't seen you yet. Uh, but you see this group. What would you like to do? How were the poachers a problem? Uh, you know that, I mean, poachers, poaching in general is disapproved of, uh, but uh, you know that they've been stealing stuff. Like this this whole valley is known for like, it's most, this most well-known industry is it's like sheep herding and in, in kind of wool production and such. And apparently there has been a rash of, uh, of poachers lately that have been coming in and kind of stealing whole chunks of, uh, of flocks of sheep and also um, kind of just like, shearing away wool uh, and taking it night and stuff. Um, I don't think we'd be hostile towards them. Maybe we can ask them what they've seen out here. Okay. So I'm, I'm willing to come out. Are they being... Do they look shady? Like, are they hiding anything? Sort of way. Uh, roll an observation check. So remember that's uh, that's uh, just two d sixes, and yeah. you just need to hit a nine. Okay. Oh no. No, I mean like uh, you see a couple that are over by the cart that are working on it. You see a, a a bunch more over by this large tree. A few of which are kind of doing target practice, shooting up uh, you know crossbow bolts into the into the trunk, and then a couple more look to just be like eating, like they're eating like little chunks of bread and stuff. Guys, they look. I'm dropping the accent, by the way. I can't do it anymore. They look <laughs> We're like a be fucked. fantastic group. I'm going to go talk to them, see what they're up to. Okay. We'll walk over there. You step up, and you step out from. Hey, your, pals. And you, every all of them just turn, and the, those that have crossbow boat, crossbows in their hands <laughs> are pointing them at you at this point. A few of them have chunks of bread still in their mouths, like dripping down into their beards. Uh, Whoever was like hammering away at one of the axles of the of the cart just kind of looks over at you, stops mid swing and kind of looks. And one of uh one of the ones that has bread in their mouth kind of steps a few feet forward, still holding the crossbow, and kind of you see them waving down like, hey, uh, hello, young man. What can we do for you? Fellow adventurers, how are you doing this afternoon? Um, what are we up to today? What's uh, what's uh, what's on the uh, what's on the menu? How's it going? We are repairing our uh, vehicle here. Had a bit of a problem, and and we'll be on our way. They're all kind of like exchanging confused looks, and you can see some people are a little like you can tell. Some of them are just just looking to unload on you right now. Others are just like, eh, hang on, hang on. What uh, what you guys up to? What you doing? Uh, I literally just told you. I said we're fixing our cart, and just, then we'll be on our way. You might want to ask a different question. I'm just curious where you're off to. What's uh? What's oh, that? we're heading southward. You know, past. Yeah, to the markets to the south and getting out of the valley a bit. What about you? You are are you lost? Uh, nah, me and my buddies over here. We um, we're looking for like this like goat head. And uh, you guys seen one? And then you see it at the at the mention of other people, like, why don't you just tell your friends to come on out too? How about ah, that? that well, wave. over here. Hi. They want to have a conversation. Okay, you start to see like all of all of the these 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 men and women are starting to get up now. A few of them are, you know, one of them's got this the big hammer. A couple of them are kind of reaching for weapons at that point. And they're looking like, um, what are you look? You, you you said you're looking for something. Now now let's take it easy. We're just trying to make our way to the grotto. What are you talking about? There's a, a head. Floating head. These guys are adventurers. They see stuff like that all the time. No, we're not adventurers. Sorry, you've got the wrong impression of us. We're just you're capitalists, you know. You've got 
supply in the trade. And you said they were collecting hair in their cart. Uh, now that you're out from your hiding place and you're closer, you can see that there is a whole mess load of like sheep's wool in the back of their cart. Oh. And you also notice that there's like this large chest, uh, like this like this big box that's, that's kind of hidden underneath some of that, that wool. You don't see any signs of sheep, by the way. Um, how, many, how many people exactly are there? Uh, what a great question that you ask. Uh, looks like there's a total of five. Okay. Um, I'm going to see what you guys want to do first before I do anything, Wacko. Does anybody else want to talk? I'm just looking as menacing and as intimidating as possible. My full plate with my heater shield. Like, I'm a fortress of metal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. You're just a robot at this point. And <laughs> yeah, you just exactly. don't realize it. There's like a little coin slot right here that's like for music. <laughs> They're Please like... give me quarter and I will punch <laughs> people for you. I'm sure you guys are used to being out here. Do you know anything interesting at the grotto? Okay. Roll a roll a witch. See how you your impression of. And I'm gonna say roll this against the odds. Against. Yeah, they're a little suspicious. Uh you can tell that they're probably doing some shady stuff and you're kind of interrupting them. What if I have this lovable rogue thing it says i have upper hand if they're mm -hmm. non-hostile so uh so cancel it'll out. cancel out and you can just roll normal Ooh, not quite okay no lie sorry we don't know nothing about that don't know nothing about that at all um so cat track go ahead and roll an observation test all right yeah Okay. Catrack, you, you notice uh, when you're looking over where they're, you know, there are a couple of them are hanging out, like where the a couple of bolts have been shot into the tree trunk. Uh, you notice there's something moving around uh, in the trees. Uh, you can see that the hair is sort of moving, but it's not just falling the way you would expect it, but it's actually moving. And then as everyone's talking and exchanging, you can no you notice that a whole long, very tight braid, like thick, just unfurls hanging down from the branch itself and begins to wrap very quietly and carefully, like it's not even being noticed, around one of the men that's holding a a crossbow at you. And then you can see right as it's right as the guy notices, he looks at it's like, what the fuck? It squeezes. And this like snake-like head pops up, and it's all made of hair. Uh, and immediately they all kind of turn around, like "What the fuck?" Uh, so everyone, go ahead and roll a grip check first. As you well, see a massive it's... python of hair beginning to curl down from uh, from the trees. Um, okay. Yeah, five. Anybody who passed, uh, which is nine or above, you can go ahead and take a point of experience. Uh, anybody who failed, which is under nine, so eight and below, you can go ahead and Me. lose a point of grip. Okay. Okay. Can uh, you take, like, at any time you can take a thing to get more grip? Yes. Yeah. So outside of combat, you can take an affliction, uh, which will kick you back up to 10 grip. In combat, however, it's only to five, if I recall correctly. Are we in combat right now? You tell me. <laughs> uh, we're about to be. It's up to you. <laughs> you guys are a good 20 feet from this tree or so where this, this, this python has now wrapped itself around one of them. Two of the guys who are standing next to you have just, like, fired the crossbow quarrels right into the, the thick braided, this massive, like, dreadlock of that's been wrapped around this guy. And this strange head is now up. And it's looking like it's, it's like, about to reach down onto the head of this poor man who's being, being squeezed. Uh, I'm going to use my uh, true grit ability because I failed my grip check, so I will not lose grip. Okay, fair enough. Okay, but you also I don't you don't get grip. the XP, though, for it because it's you didn't pass the test. Well, actually, I've been misreading it the first two times. It says the first uh, the first time each adventuring day an outcast would lose grip due to a grip check, um, they can ignore it. So yeah. I guess it's like a free roll. Uh, no, I think oh. what it means is you don't lose the grip, but you don't get credit for passing a grip check. You actually need to pass the grip check to get the XP credit. 
So, right. So I rolled yeah. a seven, and that's why I was using it. That's right. how I was interpreting yeah, yeah. at least. Yeah, I interpret it as like you're you're good. You don't lose your grip, but you also don't gain yeah. the XP. So right. that's where I'm at. Okay, you guys tell me, what are you doing at this point? Like, there's a little bit of chaos now going with them. Uh, you can see the one that had the hammer has now kind of is starting to run to, to go help. And this, and you start to realize this 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 creature, whatever this this long snake thing of hair is, is is quite massive as as stuff's moving about a bit. And there's all sorts of other uh, other branches where movement is now happening. This thing's got to be 20, 30 feet long, starting to sw- you know, kind of curve its way down the tree. What are you all doing? I'll rush into a system. Okay, I, fair enough. Dude, too, by the way, I get to roll a d6 for the day, so I can remember I can like... Oh, yeah, go ahead and roll your d6, yeah. So, uh, someone... Okay, so someone gets a three. Okay. All right, so... Uh, so, Leon, you said you're rolling in. Uh, mm. Grip, uh, Betty Grip's, um, it's like a fear test or something like that. It's like how you're handling like crazy stuff that happens. Like Ashley said, like if it's really scary or uh, like unexplainable. In this case, it's a giant python made of hair. Sometimes you roll a grip check for that, you know, and see if if you're handling it okay. Grip is is sort of like your, it's like your your kind of grip on reality, sanity. If your grip ever goes to zero, like you either die of shock right then and there like a heart attack or you just like run into the hills screaming crazily never to be seen again um okay so you're running in leon uh what are you doing uh running up to this python just i'll hack at it okay so go ahead and you can move up that's fine and then go ahead and roll uh your test uh with whatever i don't know what kind of weapon you have uh it's a scimitar so it's a whip hey let me get us a map too See what Not I got. Good. Shall we roll initiative? Yeah, that's uh, no. I, I, I'm actually just gonna say let's use popcorn initiative. Uh, I like that so much better. We've been using that in a lot of our games, so okay. I'm giving I'm giving uh, Leon credit. So popcorn initiative. What this basically does uh, as we switch over, let's activate that. Um, hang on one second. So popcorn initiative. What it basically means is like whoever goes. Um, Whoever goes, like once they're done, they identify who goes next. So in this case, once uh, once Leon's done, he can identify who goes next. Once that's determined, uh, like it just you just kind of keep picking people, but you can never go twice. Like Leon can't go and pick Horian, and then Horian can be like, "All right, now Leon goes again." Like it doesn't really work that way. Um, but it also means you have to pick like the enemies and the other NPCs and stuff. I'll treat all the all the like the the poachers here as like one big grouping. Um, and then the last person to go, NPC. Goes first, right? Not only that, they go twice in a row. So they finish mm-hmm. the round, and then they go again on the on the next yeah. round. So you, it's all about kind of strategizing. So Leon, you run up. You're starting. You're, well, I'm saying you're starting initiative. So Leon, you're running up. Um, you roll your check. Yeah, I was a nine, so it's pass. Okay, uh, roll your damage. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. That's, that's a fail. Not, that's a oh, fail. Yeah. It's wait. Uh, how, how does this work again? I forgot. I didn't roll it correctly. All right. So I'll say three d six. Three d sixes. Yeah, I did one more. Oh. Okay. So that's still fail. you need to hit the. I can't hit it. Okay. All right. Yep. Uh, so you miss. Uh, mm. Who do you want to go next? What the snake go? You want the snake to go next? Okay. Uh, so the snake is going to. Uh, you're gonna see it just continue to tighten, and the one guy that it's around, uh, I'll ping that guy right there is the one he's sort of being swallowed up. I'm using a bone naga here, even though it's a really long thing of, of hair. Uh, it's just squeezing, and then I'm gonna roll a d6 to see which one of these I lash out at. If it's a one or two, it's gonna lash out with its head at you, otherwise it'll attack one of the NPCs that are around it. Do we hear bone snapping from the squeezed guy yet? Yeah, you do hear. <gasps> Definitely. Uh, I rolled a six. Sorry, that was a, I, I didn't mean to leave it on private, but I rolled a six, which means it's going to go ahead and it's going to attack um, one of these uh, one of these other guys. Um, let me check really quick. See what else this one gets. This is the python. Yeah, this you needed to hit a ten, by the way. The AC is on is ten for this one. Mm. Um, so its bites gain plus one on damage. Okay, so he's going to reach out. And he's going to snap out at one of the other ones that are starting to surround him. Uh, so I roll 3d6. So if you're new to this game, attacking, you roll 3d6s. 
You take two of those D6s, you add them to whatever stat, like whether it's if it's a brawn attack or something like that. And if you can hit the AC of whoever you're targeting, then yay, it's a hit. And then the unused D6 is your damage. Uh, and so in this case, I can make um, a three plus three plus another three is nine, which is enough to hit it. So I crit uh, the one that I'm uh, gonna attack, the poacher to the south, uh, which means I will roll an injury uh, for him. Let's see how this goes. Uh, all right. So as this creature is is squeezing the one man, snaps out with this this strange head that's made of, of tightly wound hair and just gets the uh, the other one right in the head and just kind of you hear a little twist and a crack leon and this uh this other this this guy right here just goes and falls to the ground okay uh and so then they'll pick somebody else to go so i'll pick uh i'll pick horian um so that was that. That was the the uh, the big creature's turn. And so, Horian, you can go next. Um. <clears throat> so even though Horian's an outcast and isn't a people person, he knows a poacher when he sees one, and he's still got those knightly tendencies in him. So I don't know if I'm going to help them fight the snake. I might just stand back and watch on my turn. Okay. Um. They actually, have that cool chest. Yeah, I could go and mess up that, but there's two guys next to it. Um, I. If I were to stand next to Leon, would I be able to provide him some kind of like bonus to his armor if I put like the shield next to him, so at least he's protected? Um, I'll probably give him like um, you know, I might make it like against the odds if somebody attacks him. That, that's, okay, that's yeah. probably the best I would do. Yeah, that's fine. I'll do that then. Like I'll keep an eye on Leon, but okay. I'm not interested in helping poachers. Okay, so you run up and you're just kind of you just get basically covering Leon. Uh, yeah. All right. So pick who goes next. Uh, so, so far, uh, it's been Leon, and it's been the big uh, hair python. Yeah. I'll say uh, Catrack. Okay. Uh, Catrack, what do you want to do? So, Catrack is considering the situation here that we've got these hair creatures that have come in for some unknown reason that aren't generally aggressive, and we've got poachers. Um, so, Catrack is actually going to attack one of the poachers oh okay uh which one would you like the there's one that's currently being enveloped by the snake this one here has fallen to the ground that i just pinged uh there's one that's next to where leon and horian are standing and then there are two that are over by the cart that haven't yet acted this round uh i'm gonna go ahead and go over to the one that fell down okay and finish him off all right you can go ahead and you could do a coup de gras like no problem and that like you might even be able to it. convince them you're trying to help. Oh, I know how to do medicine. Crack. So describe um, how this looks, Katrick. Um, so basically, I have a throwing knife, um, but instead of kind of throwing the throwing knife, I kind of have it out, um, and I'm just going to come up and just kind of do a stab just right through the heart. Okay. Um, all right. Like, it's just going to be that blatant. You're just going to come up. Are you trying to make yeah. it look like... Okay. Uh, I think at that point... Because yeah. um, I, I kind of want to make sure that this creature knows that, like, we're not... You know, like, I, the first person that went attacked it, which isn't what I would have done, and so I'm trying to do something very obvious to show the creature that we're actually um, willing to kind of fight on its side. Okay. Just doing a couple of rolls. I mean, I, they're all kind of busy... Like, I just rolled a couple observation checks and stuff. Like, no one really... Like, they saw you go up to them, but they didn't necessarily see that, like, you're stabbing them to death. So, no It's one, just adrenaline, guys. <laughs> no one initially noticed it. Like, oh, they're too busy oops. paying attention to this giant freaking snake creature that is enveloping them. And now, plus, like, Orion and Leon are right next to the other guys, so it's kind of hard well, to see. Like, only dreams now. <laughs> oh, thanks for those bits, Captain Carrion. Uh, I think what we'll do with bits, um, 100 bits, uh, you can go ahead and someone, if someone wants to take it, you can just do a reroll. Like, we'll treat it like exertion in this game. Don't forget, you can burn grip to do exertion and do like and reroll a die. So go ahead and if any, when everybody, whenever anybody wants to use it, you can go ahead and I'll keep track of them. Right now we got one, but you're welcome to do it. Um, so that was Catrack. Who's going next? Ah. Uh I'm going to say Sophie. Cool. Uh, thank you for providing me with a body. 
Uh, I would, would like to reanimate it, Jeff. Oh my goodness! Okay, <laughs> walk so, us through what's happening. Um, I have spirits of the beyond, so I uh, spend an action and a point of grip to reanimate a corpse to serve me. Um, it's got one brawn, one <laughs> wit, six vigor, but it's negative three to initiative. Um, so he'll probably be last in the round. Okay. But um, so as soon as I notice that she kills him, I'm like, oh, finally, thank you for the body. Okay. And Sophie just like kind of does her thing where she chants this weird thing and she brings the body to life. And then she, I want to direct this guy to start walking towards the two poachers near the cart. Okay. So and you then- you cast, and so it it starts to so the the one that that Catrack just killed is yeah. now starting to. <laughs> And he he moves in like a weird enough way that a okay. cat track is probably positive that I did weird weird body uh, magic. Yeah, you, you've grew, you've you've been together for a while, so I think yeah. you, you all know each other's skills and abilities. So that's fine. So I think Catrick would know, like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, <laughs> I will step out of the way and okay. allow it a clear path. Uh, and yeah. then you said you were moving where, Sophie? Uh, I'm not moving, but I'd like it to start moving towards the two poachers. Uh, um, do we want? Do we want it to be on your initiative? You said it was had like a minus three to initiative, right? Yes. So yeah. I, it can it can wait to do to do yeah. its thing, but like that's yeah. that's my action point okay. and all that. Okay. And then um. Well, like yeah. if you wanted, you can just go ahead and because your your turn's over and in popcorn initiative, you just pick the next person to go. So you can pick your creature, and we'll just say that. So you pick your creature to go, mm. and then they can start moving. Yeah. Okay. So then they they're gonna move over like lumbering, and. As they're coming over, like he's got blood pouring down his chest at this point from where Catrick just stabbed him. And yep. the two of them that he that they're that was the snake. It's lumbering towards <laughs> is, is they're they're focused on and like almost stunned by what the hell is just happening right now. They're like, Oh, oh, Freddy! Oh my god, Freddy, are you okay? And then this lumbering creature comes up. What is the creature gonna do? What is your Um I like action? to think that Sophie has like practice of almost like projecting her voice so she like almost like puppetry so she makes him like you know just kind of go help me and then um i wanted to hit to just sucker punch one of them in the face okay i like it roll that with upper hand i feel like this is such a surprise <laughs> if no idea what's happening <laughs> uh go ahead and roll it up yeah upper hand okay uh so 3d6 uh and you're gonna need uh to hit a uh an eight Okay. Uh, what's your? You got the bits for a reroll if you want. Well, no, I think there's the stat. Well, too. it's stat block. It gets one. Okay, so that one would be enough to hit. So to bring it up to an eight, and which means the damage you'd be doing is. No, actually, that's not true. Three plus it's three not. plus one is seven. Yeah. So you can reroll the one if you want with those bits. Just do a free. I thought you roll four dice when you have upper hand, though. I can give you. That's three. correct. Oh. Roll another d6. Good call. Thank you. Good catch. Three. So many threes. Uh, so it drops so, the one. So yeah. three plus three is six plus one is it's still seven. Yeah, it's still seven. Uh, uh, you can use the reroll if you want. You can burn a grip. You can burn one of your own grip to use I'll exertion. Burn a grip for exertion to reroll one. Okay, so go ahead and roll another d. Well, it's just the one die. So roll another d six, and that's going to replace one of your threes. That four. is enough. The four is Perfect. enough. That does three damage as. This lumbering zombie poacher goes after the living poacher with a surprise attack that no one saw coming. They're like, what are you doing, Jose? Get the fuck off me. And, uh, yeah. Who do you want to go next? Um, The poachers, I think, is a pretty natural. Okay. You want them to go next? All right. Yeah. That's good. All right. So then they're going to... So the one that just got attacked will, uh, will... I think we'll just try to attack your little guy, your uh, your zombie dude. Okay. Um, uh, so it's 36. I get a plus one on this. Um, okay, so that's going to be a hit uh, for, looks like, five damage. Uh, how much health does it have? Six. Okay, so it took five damage. Uh, and then this other one will go ahead and charge in on the giant hair python uh, and I will again do 3d6 plus 1 and that'll be that'll be a hit uh, I can get to 10 with 2 damage so the python has had 2 damage done to it 
Okay. Um, then the last one will... the one, Well, not the last one, but the one that's already standing next to the python will also attack the python. Uh, wow. I'm rolling well. Uh, that'll hit, but only one damage. And then the one that's inside of the python that's currently being grappled uh, is going to try to break uh, the grapple. Uh, so I'm just going to roll a brawn check to try to pass. This is 2d6 plus 1. All right. <laughs> That's going to be a fail. Uh, and so this guy is trying to... Get me out! Get me! And just can't. Leon, Horion, you hear... in contract, you hear bones breaking and popping. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, who hasn't gone yet? Um, O'Hare. Justin, you can go. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk up. So you have the middle one next to Horian. I'm just playing. I'm saying I'm terribly wrong. Horian? Horian is, um, that's the zombie, right? Yeah, this one is the uh, I put my marker on. Yeah, gonna, exactly. The one you just pinged. I'm going to go to the one that's under Leon and go behind him. I'm going to stab him with a sword. So that's the plane. Uh, all right, something? go ahead and move yourself. You can drag yourself up to where you want to go. Everything's within a move, uh, one one sort of moving zone, and then you can roll your attack, 3d6, plus uh, your weapon stat. Like what kind of weapon you're using, wit, brawn, or, or will? So I have a dueling sword, which is wit. Which one's the moving button again? I'm sorry. All you got to do is just left hold down left click and drag your token. Okay, my bad. Okay, and then just uh, roll 3d6s. Uh, at, at plus your wit bonus, and then hit enter. So, I have a negative wit bonus. <laughs> All right. No, you shouldn't. It says negative one wit. Should be one wit. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, that... so no, then... no, no. This is canon for Justin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So again, so if it, for those, because Maddie was just asking about some stuff in chat, uh, I'll just explain it again. When you attack in this game. Each weapon that you use has either brawn that's attached to it, which is basically strength, wit, which is like dexterity and cleverness, and then or there's will, which is like intelligence, knowledge, that kind of stuff. Um, and so you add your bonus to your roll. You roll three d6s, and then you add your bonus. Two of the d6s you take to see if you hit, and the third d6 is what you do for damage. Uh, in this case, Justin, you rolled four plus two plus your one. The max you could do is seven. Uh, which is not enough to hit, so you missed. All right, I'm like, I'm having fun. And I completely <laughs> okay. Uh, so then, the only person who hasn't gone, I think, I think Everybody. everybody's gone now. So you get Just to go again. Twice. Yep. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna aim at his leg. Okay. Yeah. All right, go for it. So same deal. There'll be three d sixes. Plus, I have one wit, so just plus one. It's so literally roll. the same thing you just rolled. Yeah, I screwed. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, that looks good. Uh, so let's see. Click the little detail button, you can expand the roll. Uh, so it looks like you can go six plus two. You take the six and the two that you rolled for to hit, and then you can do three damage. So you come up and you do three damage to this guy uh, sitting in front of you. And he's like, oh, What the fuck is this fucking body? I mean, what's wrong with you? I'm uh, like, adventure! And I just... <laughs> <laughs> you crazy, man! Uh, all right, so who do you want to go next? Anybody you could pick, except for yourself. Um, we'll go with the snake. Okay. The snake will go next. There's a bunch of people that are within range at this point. Um, they're going to go... Let's see, one, two, three, four. I got five different choices. Um, so I'm going to roll a D5. If I roll a one to three, it's going to be one of you folks. Uh, otherwise, it'll be one of the other ones. Uh, it is going to be uh, one of you three. So uh, it's going to be uh, looking at the screen. One, two, three. It's going to lash out at Horian. Uh, actually, because you're two. Because Leon is one, Horian two, Melissa three. That's what I saw. Uh, all right, so this is going to be 3d6s plus, uh, I think it was three. Let me double check. Yeah, 3d6 plus three, as it's going to lash out with its head snapping like a 
like a snake might. And uh, let's see what I do. Uh, so let's see, I can get to... Um, what's your AC? Uh, my armor's 10. 10? All right, I can get to a 10 uh, with... Uh, six plus my six and the two. You dodge the crit, but you do take four damage. So I had to use the six that I rolled f to hit you, uh, but then you take four damage as this thing just you hold the shield up and it pushes right through the shield because this thing's got a ton of strength. Um, and I think it'll so it'll pick um, Horian. You can go next. Go ahead. Um. I think on that, what I'll do is I'll drop my shield to the ground, so then I lose that armor, and I'll take my great sword, and hmm, yeah, I don't want this snake to keep messing me up. So um, yeah, I'll just like pivot on my foot, take the momentum and hit me with, and just bring the uh, the sword down at it. Okay. So... All right. This is gonna be. Uh, you're gonna need a ten for this one. Yeah, and I was just checking. I want to check my advancements really quick. Okay. Yeah, I'll use um, my weapon master with heavy. So I'll put, spend a point of grip um, so that I have upper hand. And then it's rolling my brawn because that's what the sword uses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. That. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you got your upper hand. Roll an extra d6. You're, you're missing one. Oh, right. Oh, I think it actually. Did it. I see three plus two in the details. Six, unless two. I'm all right. Um, yeah, you needed to roll for four. attacks. It's four. Yeah, it's a little different for for attacks because of the damage die. Uh, but in this case, it's gonna be a six and a three and a two. So you can do three damage to it. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to get the crit off, unfortunately. But you can you can get yeah. to eleven with your attack, which means you can do it with three damage, and which is what you'll do. Okay. So yeah, you hack away at this thing, and as you bring that heavy two-handed sword down onto it. This is hair, but this is incredibly tightly wound, compacted hair. You see a, a few hairs begin to fray, but you, I mean, it, it's almost like you're trying to chop through it, through like a, a, like a strong tree, like getting through bark. It's, it's almost surprising, especially considering how flexible this snake has been coming down. Uh, who do you want to go next? Um, we'll have the uh, zombie go next. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Uh, so the zombie will just gonna continue. Do you want it just to continue to attack the one? Yep, Sophie? he's just gonna keep punching that guy. So three d six. Okay, you got it. Oh, that's a good roll right there. Yeah. So he even without it, <laughs> I hit a ten. I do six damage. So that's a crit though, right? Yeah, that's gonna kill. The guy. That kills the guy. Uh, so he is dead. Uh, so the zombie like reaches out and like bites the guy's throat out. Okay. And like so. If there's other people still alive, they hear the one guy yell as his friend takes him to the ground and starts ripping out his throat with his yeah. mouth. Like they're looking, at, one of them sort like like looking back, like the one that's sort of fighting now. O'Hare stabbing in the back. He's looking over top of like the little small thing. Like, what the? F Why are you eating him? He's your cousin. And then yeah, uh, who do you want to go next? Um, me. Okay, perfect. Uh, I would like Selfish to, yep. <laughs> I would like to come over here, um, and I, base. Uh, oh no. Yep. Are you? Um, <laughs> so um, the zombie is gonna be kind of in front of me, and I'm gonna make a show of like trying to like help this guy, but I'm gonna be collecting some meat. Okay. Um, um I want do a witch check though, uh, for this. Because if you're okay. starting to carve through, so let's see if you can do this uh, in a way that your allies won't notice. I mean, I'm kind of losing it because like my grip's pretty low, and I'm brittle minded. So I'm gonna say maybe at this point, like, I'm not super concerned. Okay, but... that's something you have upper hand though, because we're all you know distracted yeah. by a giant snake. That's fair. I would say yeah, that's that that's a good point. Roll so roll a witch check uh, at upper hand to see if you could start carving some pieces before anyone notices. Ten. Okay, so yeah, we'll say you carve like you come up and you just like can hack Justin up. just like know in his soul because he's already seen it once. <laughs> fair enough. Just okay. the fact that he knows I'm near bodies, he's concerned. Look, okay. guys, for adventure. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. Uh, and who would you? Who do you want to go next? Um, uh, 
Um, so it was me, um, Catrack. Okay, Catrack. You've got, you've got this, this person inside of the snake that you don't feel is likely to survive, probably already is on their last legs. You know that there's a couple other poachers that have already been taken care of. You saw the zombie pop up and is attacking one of them. There's two more. O'Hare is stabbing at the ankles of one. What would you like to do? Um, but I did just see the hair snake now attack one of my party. Yeah, yes. my shield's got a big dent in it. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, I think now that I need to defend uh, the party, um, I am going to um, pull up my long blow, long bow. Mm-hmm. I'm going to spend a point of grip um, for radiant blade. So the attack um, is made with upper hand and deals an extra D3 of damage that would be considered magical. Okay. Go ahead and roll your attack. You need to hit 10. Take the, down the grip before I forget. I'm going to roll 4d6. Mm-hmm. And then I'm also going to have my. That's a hell of a roll. Which. We drop is the two. two. Okay. So I'll drop the two that you roll because so it's the lowest. I have an extra two to use. I can get a crit then because I've you got two fact, on my wit and I've got a yeah. four, five, and a six. So you do six damage. And I have to roll an injury for this uh, big old snake creature. Was uh, the six damage adding that three, or is the three on top of that six? Uh, you don't add anything to your to your damage. Did your did your I ability? Put the, the three on the attack. Oh, the three's on yeah. the attack. Got you. Yeah, it's it's just a flat die that you roll. It loses. Oh no, you're right. Sorry, the D three. I didn't roll the D three. Sorry, you're right. I did the upper hand. Um, the D three is actually yeah, for radiant blade, right? Okay, roll a D three then. So it's a crit plus a D three. Okay, and you've and the the crit actually Sorry. does two extra damage. So. So right now you're at eight, and with that is nine. So you just did nine <laughs> points of damage to this thing. Oh, it's a mini Josh attack. And you can see that you manage to, when you when you shoot this this radiant arrow uh, at this this creature, Horian, you had just hacked through it with your sword, and it barely made it made any kind of headway through through like this 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 twine. But the arrow just kind of goes through and through it, and it just sort of rips a small hole right through the middle of this this large dreadlock, basically. Uh, and then Katrak's gonna say, "I was gonna have your back," and then you had to attack one of my party. Katrak, you can go next. Uh, so I am going to pick. Uh, Horian, have you gone this turn? Are we on the next round? Yeah, yeah. yeah I believe yeah. gone. The snake, the snake picked him. So yeah, I haven't got yet. Okay. Leon has. I, was it. Say, I think Leon's the only one. Leon and the done. poachers. All right. Leon and the Poachers sounds like a 1980s band. <laughs> Leon and the Poachers. I'll do Poachers next. Eddie and the Cruisers. Uh, okay. Um, so two of them are dead. One of them, well, one of them's, I'll try to break the, um, I'll try to break the, br- yeah, the one that's inside the snake fails. He's still grappled and dead effectively. Um, the one that O'Hare attacked will turn around and attack O'Hare. Uh, so they got this like this little knife that they're just going to wheel around, and he's going to try to cut at you now. As opposed to, he looks like he was trying to. Like, you pulled it out maybe to cut away at the hair, the hair python. Uh, so 3d6 is uh, flat, no bonus on this one. Uh, what's your AC there, Justin? What's your armor? It is eight. Eight. I can hit an eight, and I can do two damage. So you take two points of damage. As he turns around, and he just kind of cuts you right across the cheek a little bit, a little blood, because you're pretty short, so it's hard for him to get anywhere else. So he kind of catches you right in the cheek. Uh, The other one, I think, is going to continue to attack. Isn't going to go after Leon or or Horion yet, because neither of them have actually done anything wrong uh, yet, uh, aggressive. I think he's just going to still attack the uh, the big old creatures. This is 36 plus 1. And is in ineffective attacks. Uh, so then, Leon, it's your turn. You get to go twice in a row. All right, I'm going to gang up on this python here. Okay. Try to hack it down. Go for it. Wow, that's a bad roll. Holy crap. Oh, no. Yeah. You got any torches left? 
That's terrible, I do, but... We also have the bits, and you might have some grip to spend. Uh, I think Ashley used the bits when she had no, all she those No, she used threes. her own grip for she that. She used her own grip. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Does that give me... No, just... I don't know if the bits will help you for that. I'll say for the... Only... They're bits, so you can do a reroll. A full reroll? Yeah, I'll just say it. Well, I mean, yeah. people gave all us... Right. Captain Carrion gave his money. It's cool. He gave us bits. It's worth it. Nice. Really? <laughs> Got the same the future refused to change. Uh, oh my gosh. Oh no. Alright, I think you're getting an affliction for that. What the heck? What the hell is that? I'm just curious what I would have rolled. Okay. That is pretty debilitating dread. I'm gonna say that you uh <laughs> now I have a fear of snakes. <laughs> you have a fear of, you have fear, you have a fear of snakes. You have a fear of snakes. As this thing turns around and like hisses at you, and you're like, "What the hell? How's this making sound?" But at the same time, it terrifies you. So yeah, you can go we ahead. We got take. more bits. Oh, thank you, Captain Carey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> second turn, Leon. You can go again. Yes, Starting I'm gonna around. replay that again. Shards again. I'll take a look at that, man. I don't. You think gonna I do know better that. this time? Yeah. Let's see if I get another five. Go for it. Oh. <laughs> Jeez, you're moving up. Yikes. Nice. Uh, not. In like two or three turns, you'll probably be okay. Who you want to go next? <laughs> Just kill me, snake and go. Okay. <laughs> snake and go? Okay. <laughs> All right. So the snake will kill the one uh, that it has grappled. Um, and then you will see it begin to climb back up. Uh, into like start to pull itself back up into the tree, bringing the limp body of this poacher with it. Um, uh. I'm gonna go ahead and roll uh, a witch check first to see if I can do this in such a way as to avoid opportunity attacks. Um, it's an escape check. I fail. Uh, so, if anybody wants to take a swing at this thing as it starts to climb back up into this fairly large tree with this limp body, you're welcome to do so. I would say, I would say, Leon. Uh, Horian, you you two can go ahead and do it if you like. Uh, Catrack, you were doing range, so no. O'Hare, you were attacking the poacher, so I would say no. So Leon or Horian, you can go ahead and take a swing if you want. Yeah, I've been practicing my swing to see if I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. Those were just warm-ups. Oh, <laughs> oh, my, no. oh my gosh. God, you're the worst. Uh, just, Yikes. Don't invite me to pinata parties. We do have, we do we have more bits if you wanted to re-roll. Uh, um, and then fine. I have to roll... Is do I need to roll more d6 or no? Uh, yeah, you do. Uh, roll okay. one more d6 because at remember, attacks get that extra d6. So, uh, didn't help at all anyway. Okay, uh, but you still hit, uh, you hit for two damage, um, which is not quite enough to kill it, but you could definitely carve off a piece of it as it sweeps up. You cut through like the little, little part, the end part of its tail, and a tiny bit flops to the ground and kind of rise around a bit the way if you like rip the tail off like a lizard or something, it kind of still moves for a bit. Um, I think I'll have uh, let's see, Horian, you can go. So this thing is now climbed up into the tree and is 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 we'll say, you know, 15 feet up into the up into the tree branches, uh, not easily accessible. It's up to you. There are still two other poachers who are nearby who are looking... Uh, you know, in horror, but they're also looking at you guys now as some of your party have been attacking them. And yeah, uh, I like to imagine that like right now, Leon and I are like side to side. So what I'm going to do is like <laughs> spin around Leon and like just swinging my sword and I'll attack the one that's uh, north of us. So I'll attack good. this guy. Go for it. Thanks for them bits. Uh, that's good. Nine is good. Uh, roll your, uh, let's see. You got three, four and one. Were you were you in were you always rolling that? That's for the whole round for the whole combat, right? You get upper hand. Yes, uh, that is how this okay. uh, once yeah once per combat. Okay. Uh, Roll an extra d six. Yeah, I keep forgetting about that. Okay. I, it's weird. I keep rolling my brawn at upper hand, but it doesn't do it because that's a brawn check. It's not an attack. I don't have separate attack oh, programmed in. Gotcha. I don't know how to do it. Some of it gets too complicated. Jesus, to with these ones. Uh, okay, you need uh, an eight, uh, which you can like get. A three. I can give him a three. You can take a three, yeah. Oh, that's true. If I took it, let's see. If I took a three, then that would be three damage, right? Uh, if you took the three, that would be four damage because you can get to eight with two threes in your plus two, and then you can have ah uh, right, and that would be enough yeah, to yeah, kill yeah. this guy. So how do you yeah, yeah. describe your kill? 
Yeah, yeah. So like I said, so we were stabbing at the snake and I'm on like Leon's left side and I literally just like pivot my body around him, like kind of going around his back while just swinging my greatsword and I just like cut right into the side of the guy. It's basically like collapse his whole right side yeah. with my sword. Well, not collapse, but, you know, lacerate. Okay. So he falls like, down to the ground and there's one poacher left now who's alive and is staring at you all like, what the fuck's wrong with you all? Uh, Horian, who's going next? I'm going to say O'Hare. He's having a good old time down there. Okay. O'Hare. One, there's one one person left at this point as the uh, as the snake has climbed back up and has taken one of the limp bodies of the poachers with them. Um, yeah, there's only one left. Actually, nope. The one right in front of you is actually the one that's left. The one that you've been attacking, the one that just turned around and cut you on the cheek. One left. What would you like to do? Well, clearly attack him, so that's what I'll do. I'll attack him with my uh, sword again. And I'll say you guys have got this guy narrowed down. It's just the one. Um, I'll say this is trivial because he's he's completely surrounded, completely unnumbered, so it's going to hit. Just roll 2d6s. And the higher D6 is the damage you'll do. <laughs> Awful. Awful. Okay, so as he's just staring at you, uh, two damage. How do you kill him, Justin? Where do you stab him to kill him? I go up to him, jump on his back, and I slice his head off with my with my sword and pour his blood on my face and say, Adventure! <laughs> That's how he does. Yeah, you have no. an interesting character. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think I need to roll a grip check here, but all right. Okay. Uh, and so at this point, everything's off. Unless you wanted to climb up the tree to face that python. No. What do you all want to do? I want to check out that chest. Okay. Uh, you go over to it. You pull out. And it is wool, by the way, that's covering it. It's not extra hair. It's just wool. And you start digging through it, um, and it looks like there's a whole, like, mess load of, like, looks like weapons, actually, but not, like, usable weapons. They're, like, made from, it's like more like display weapons of some kind. Uh, like, they got this dark kind of uh, reflective stone, maybe, like, obsidian or something like that, that is, uh, that they're made out of. They look... They, they they look almost like something you might you might see on display as opposed to actually being used. Uh oh. Thanks, Ashley. Good catch. Okay. Uh oh. We got uh, we got some bits for the bird there, Derek. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. He's the invisible bird because he keeps uh, disappearing. Fair enough. Uh, okay. So yeah, there's all these weapons in here, but they're but you would note these are probably worth a decent amount of money um, as well. Uh, this might be the type of thing that maybe people display on like the, the I missed. Great... What did we get? Oh, they're like gaming. there's a, there's a couple different yeah there's a couple different like weapons, but they're but they're not like weapons that you would probably want to use in a fight. They're more like made they're like bejeweled. They've got they're made out of like oh. some kind of dark crystal rock, like a, like an obsidian or something like that. Um, yeah, you you uh, you would think that that these would be worth a decent amount of money. In fact, nice. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, the wool itself, you could deliver to the townsfolk, maybe. Um, maybe get back in some good maybe. graces. Um, maybe. And if, if you start going through the poachers, you'll find a handful of change here and there from them as they also have some, some money on them. And if any of you uh, wanted crossbows or, uh, or short swords, uh, you can grab one as that's what they were using. I would like a crossbow. Absolutely. Go ahead. You can find them in the items directory. You can drag one over, but that's what it is. Um. Okay. There are multiple crossbows. Yeah, there were. There's. I mean, well, even the one that got, even the guy who got dragged up into the tree, we'll say his fell. So there's up to six if you wanted. Yeah, I'll Is grab a short sword. I might be able five. to use that with my shield. Absolutely. Um, your Is only there any you, item of clothing that was particular to them as poachers. Uh, no, they're just. They look like they're wearing normal clothes. You don't. You don't see anything pretty. Yeah, any. Uh, they, they they're not like wearing like. Uniforms that say, you know, poachers are us or anything. Um, 
Just remember, by the way, with weapons and stuff, that you really only have access to, like, three at a time. It's it's either what's in your hands or what's on your belt. So that type of thing. So if you have, like, five or yeah. six weapons, you can't necessarily access all of them during combat. Right, but I should be okay with the great sword, the short sword, and the shield, right? Yeah, that, that would sounds technically fine. work. Okay, yep. cool. I'm cool with it. All right. Um, well, I think the great swords are two-handed, but that's fine for now. I'll, I'll look it up later. Um, all right. What do you all want to do? I'm gonna look at everyone like they're crazy. You just killed everyone. Well, there were poachers. I, mean, I was perfectly happy to have the snake on our side to get rid of the poachers that have been bothering the town for quite some time. I don't think the thing was sent. 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 Sentient. Well, yeah, I mean, I figured that out when it attacked Horian. <laughs> but, you know, it worked for, you know, a minute. Sophie, if I, if I ever go down, I don't give you consent to reanimate me. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll heal you first. Instead of or first? Well, preferably if I can, you know, heal you, I'll do that. But I'll keep your consent in mind. I make no promises, though. But she doesn't say that. That's just me telling you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Right. All right. Well, let's keep going to the grotto. That was fun. Okay. And because Sophie <laughs> technically wasn't even like in the battle. I mean, I did that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Anybody yeah. hurt? Anybody need a... I'm some pretty hand. hurt. I took a oh, big... Would, I got a big old Do you like bird. some hands? Yes, please. How are you doing on grip, Ashley? You... I'm okay right now. Okay, because you burned a couple to, ra you know, to raise and whatnot. Yeah. And then you're burning some now, too, to heal, I think. Yeah, I spend one point to heal. Okay. Per 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 whoever has whoever I have to heal. Yeah. I really like that grip stuff, by the way, how it's both like your mana and like your ability to kind of like handle yep. crazy stuff. I like that mechanic. That kind of push. Another pull. question while this healing is happening. Sure. Are there any drugs or alcohol in their cart of belongings? Yeah. You're looking for medicine? Okay. Uh, roll well, it. I picked up the affliction in order to get grip. I picked up the affliction solace in the bottle. Okay. So now, whenever I rest, I have to like drink some booze. Vibe. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think they would. Drink. I think they would definitely have some booze. Yeah, that's that's fine. We'll say they have. Let's see. Uh, they have like three three half drinking bottles of some kind of moonshine. Two. Probably last you a couple days. All right, I fixed you by two. Yes, they aren't proper poachers without whiskey or vodka. <laughs> okay. They don't even have vodka, just potatoes. They make so, their own. I am Big Pharma. I like to sell the potatoes. Who would like to eat potatoes? All right. So, uh, so you're healed up. Good to go. Ready to continue moving forward. Everybody else is good. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Derek, what are you at? Uh, I have five bigger right now. Out of ten. Uh, can I try it again, Jeff? Yeah, I mean, it's just it, it, you have to burn the grip to do it, right? So, like, yeah. as long as you're willing to burn the grip, you're you're you can. I think I don't. I think that's the only limiting on, limiting factor on that ability. So. Okay. Four. Okay. So, uh, I'm feeling much better. Nine out of ten. There you go. I like to think like Thank I just much. walk up to you and I just hold your cheeks like just really weird. <laughs> and then as and I just leave, like, I just like caress your skin. Yeah, and, and like, like, and uh, I'm staring okay. at I'm staring at O'Hare as I do this. Like I heal <laughs> you, and I'm dead ass just staring at O'Hare. And I'm like, <laughs> pretty cool. How everyone's just completely gone insane in this party. <laughs> Weird. Um, everyone was so normal like just two sessions ago, uh, <laughs> and now well, I mean you you're never normal, Ashley. You're always <laughs> you're, thank you. You're always cutting things off, people. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> All right, so you continue heading westward, northwestward, looking for uh, something that might be considered grottos. You need to get to the edge of the forest that you were uh, you were just in. Uh, you notice the sort of the strangest thing as you see this whole like 
group of goats, there's like maybe 10 goats that just go running past together. Like they're like hopping from like rock to rock. You're getting into sort of a rockier hill type terrain. Um, and you can see the mountains erupting up to the west. And you can see that they just are just like running at great speed, hopping from, from boulder to boulder. Um, you also notice like on this fairly large flat uh, stone, there's something laying on it that it just, they, they just run right past it as if they weren't even paying attention to it. Like a body? It does look like a body, but it doesn't, yeah, you're not, you get a little closer and it's not human, not a human body, um, but it looks like an animal. Is it missing its head? Um, no, you see some horns. You're a couple, I mean, they're, I'll say you're at about maybe 10, 15 feet from it, but you look and it, yeah, it looks like a, yeah, it looks like some kind of, probably a goat or a sheep or a ram, something like that, however you want to describe it. It's got these, these kind of curled and twisted horns. Looks like it's been cut open. Blood has kind of spilled out. Um, there's this, I don't know. It's not just blood though. You see some other kind of substance on it as well. And you also notice that it's, the, as you as you get a little closer, you realize it's not just any old stone that it's on top of. There's something glinting in the veins of this this giant rock. Uh, is this like an altar? Um, I don't know. Do you get any closer? Yeah, I'll take a look okay. and see if I like any writing on the edges of the rock or anything. Uh, you go up and you look for writing. You don't notice writing. You do notice that there's there's this. There's an uh, you, you you're you're almost positive this this is kind of a, a shaved or carved rock in some way. It's it, there's there's not a whole lot of um, uh, like randomness to how it works. It looks almost like a megalith that's been buried, like like a, a big giant um, uh, huge stone that's been kind of carved down or sanded down to make a shape, and it's kind of half buried uh, in the in the earth. But you also notice that cutting in between some of the veins within this this large uh this large rock there's gold like you see like these little glints like gold veins uh within it as well um but on top of on of this you can see that there's a uh there's a goat that has had its its chest cavity kind of cut open and its innards have been spilled out onto the top of this uh this this glinty stone Well, that it... seems valuable. I'll try to collect it by just shoveling it away, I guess. Or hitting it with the shovel. You're trying to hit the goat what? or the goat or the, the ore? The... You said <laughs> there's a vein. Does anybody have like a pick or anything? That's what I got as a shovel. Um, I think a shovel this looks valuable. Yeah. Let me take the carcass. I don't think the shovel's gonna help you in this situation, uh, because it's a hard rock. Uh but I'll say you can try, but it's meaning you're not going to get an upper hand or anything from it, but you can still try to mm. like hack away at it. Sure. Go ahead. Roll, um, roll, I would say brawn. Oh, this is going to suck. <laughs> you can give me the shovel. I have a good yeah. than you were doing before. Oh, I still have nine. You got okay. it. You still got it. You got it. Ashley, what's that roll for? I just rolled a random D3. Oh, no, that was uh, your heel. Was that the heel? Yeah, that was, okay. that was my heel. Okay. Uh, yeah, you do manage to, to get a small chunk of, out of out of this large stone and you pick it up and it's like half you know basic rock but like there's also these little particulates of gold in it um if you would imagine if you had some proper mining equipment you could probably hack away at this and get some more out of it and you take a look at your shovel and it's already just just a the handful of times that you have hacked away at it you can already see the shovel is is dull down and bent if you start to try to dig more away at this you'll probably break the shovel uh, but if you could find some mining equipment, come back here. You might be able to take another pass at it. But you do get a chunk of of, of gold, so make sure you write that in your treasure. Um, yeah. And so somebody also keep track of the obsidian weapons. Just say, uh, uh, you know, a batch of obsidian weapons. So Katrick okay. is now the party's resident dissector. So she wants to take a look at this goat that's on this. That's normal. me. Surface. I'm glad it's someone else this time. <laughs> okay. Um, looking for hair in places that it doesn't belong. 
um, external, internal, run organs, things like that. Um, or if anything else okay. appears out of place. Uh, okay, well, you you don't notice any hair out of place. It's, obviously, it has goat hair, but you don't see any hair kind of growing out of its the internal organs, the intestines that have spilled out onto the stone. Um, but you do notice that there is some kind of green resin that's been um, smothered onto the to, to the goat in various places. Uh, can I do some sort of check to identify that green resin? Uh, roll a will test. Let's see how smart you are. Uh, I'm smart. Twelve. I'm smart. Did you just do a Godfather <laughs> two? Uh, did, what? Did you know you were doing a Godfather reference, or are you only doing that reference because you hear me say that all the time when I make? <laughs> That's what I, I think. It's the I plead the fifth. I think it's the second one. I did Control time. yourself, Jeffrey. It's okay. I'm smart. Uh, okay. <laughs> Um, it's a 12. Yeah. You, you, you take a little dab of it on your, on your finger, on a blade, hold it up and it whiffs back and, and you realize that this is some kind of poison. I'll warn everyone to stay, keep your distance from this. Yeah. Um, does it appear to be the method of death of the creature or something that's been used afterwards no. in sort of this little ritual thing? It looks like it's been done afterwards. Yeah, it looks like it's been smothered over top of certain areas afterwards. Oh, so something's were any, hoping it will eat it. Yeah, were any of the other animals that we saw eating this when we arrived? No, they were just they were. It's like they were chasing something, but none of you like went after them. And like now at this point, they're kind of out of out of, out of range. But they were like chasing mm. something. Okay. All right. That's good for me. Okay. Other people, what do we want to do? Do we see the outlines or like the beginnings of the grotto? Uh, you do, in fact. Prediction started. What is this? Yeah, it's a new thing we can do. What, what on earth this? is that? So people can win channel points if they make the correct prediction. So our question is, is Jeff going to kill one of the player characters today? And they can choose yes or no, and then I don't like how I am. Like I kill them, <laughs> the game kills yeah. them. But fair well, enough. you know, it it had a limitation of what I could type. All right, I'm placing all my bits on it. <laughs> Long's <laughs> gonna be like, <laughs> I climb up to the cliff and I jump off. There we go. I win. <laughs> so okay, but that wouldn't be that wouldn't be you. That would be the character doing it. So I guess I can't. I guess since it's my channel, I can't do anything. Oh, I guess yeah, I can't probably vote. not. No, it's fine. Like it's an all in, all in on a total TPK. I just 25k <laughs> all the points. Ooh. Wow. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. So. So what's the versus? So it's. It's do I? It, someone's gonna die or someone's not gonna die? Basically. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I yeah. I didn't know. Um, this is my thing. I got it. Okay, cool. I like it. Good. I'm glad someone else is going to handle that stuff because I got other shit going on. I got some shit going on. Uh, Does so... anybody have anything that's empty? Because I had a flask of acid. I used some of it last time. Does anybody else have an empty vial or Yes, something? here you go. I want to collect some of the poison. Sure. Yeah, you can Carefully. collect a little bit of the poison. It's a little... It's not clean. It's mixed with other things. It's mixed with some blood and some fur. So it's not like in great shape. You don't know if you're going to be able to maybe reuse it you'd have to be careful you probably have to get some kind of chemical equipment to maybe you know to to clean oh, it up i'm just gonna dip an arrowhead in it and see what happens oh okay fair enough uh horian in answer to your question you do see um up a little further if you start tracking your eyes past this megalith with the, the goat on it to the to the mountains to the west which are quite formidable it's a slow rocky climb you do see not too far up the slope there are two cave openings Relatively close okay. to one another. Yeah, as they're gathering their poison and things, I'll kind of like uh, point with the hilt of my or point with the blade of my sword. Say, <clears throat> uh, I think I'm. We're coming up on our destination here in a minute. Okay. I seem very impatient. I just let's go. Come on, we got to get out of here. We got caves ahead, 
adventures awaiting. Let's go. And I still have blood on like the side of my face. And then the T-Rex comes down and just bites him and picks him up. And now nah, <laughs> right. finger food. You move up the steps, uh, not the steps. You move up the slope. Uh, and it's a, probably another 15 to 20 minutes uh, before you get to what looks like a couple neighboring cave entrances. Uh, they have, they're like, they've been lintled. Like you can see that there's some sort of reinforcement to them. Um, there's a, there's some broken down like pottery and such out in front, like really old, like mixed up with some sort of dust in here. There's these carvings along the walls of the cave a bit. Um, you look, you turn and you look back and you have a, a fairly good view of the valley of the forest that you came down. And you can even see uh, Bromwell from here, uh, from a distance. Um, but yeah, you have these these two cave openings. This is where well, you tell me what you would like to do. You said that, was wait, was the cave supposed to be where the grotto is, or is it? That's that, that's that's the the interpretation that you've been working on. Yeah. Pick the cave entrance to the right. Okay, so you start going in. So Catrack leads the way inside. Doesn't look for traps or anything. I am, I do. That's like an automatic thing. Okay. <laughs> uh huh. It's an automatic thing. All right. You um, you start heading in, uh, and you do notice that there's been like the further and further you get into the cave, uh, you realize that it's it's it doesn't even though it's like naturally occurring, you also notice that there's a lot of reinforcements. Here and there, every so often, it looks like there's been some kind of wall and, and ceiling reinforcement, but it's old. It doesn't look like it's a mine. It doesn't look like it's something that's been um, that's uh, that's been carved out by like dwarves or other other folk who are like looking to just get ore or something. Instead, you start noticing that there's like these little alcoves and almost like apartments in some way you see these really old almost cave paintings in some cases these really crude images of all sorts of different things it could be you know like a handful of folks with spears and some kind of creature on a rock that looks vaguely like a large ram um you uh you can see that there's in all of the directions there's like a bunch of different like broken uh broken pots and other types of uh detritus that's uh kind of you think at some point if you would have gotten here earlier would have been a kind of a good archaeological find out oh, thanks for that sub tombstone um but you also hear the muttering of voices anyone pop uh, out? This... i'm assuming by the way that cat truck you popped out a torch as you were moving in Yes, and I did roll an eight on the observation. It's just upper hand. Okay. Um, you haven't noticed any traps or anything? You know, no signs of, of anything like that? I'll uh, light the bullseye lantern as for whenever we go in deeper. About Are we able to tell about how far the voices are? Like, do they sound close? Do they sound like they're, you know, reverberating quite a while or echoing quite a while? Uh, they're not too far away, but they they sound strange, though. Like they sound like, like chanting. No, no. It sounds more like arguing. Would it be a stretch to see if I could sense dead bodies? I mean, do you have a skill that says you can sense dead bodies? Just that I could raise them. But you just you, how you described okay. it once was super cool. I'll say this. You. If you want to burn a grip, sure. We'll say you can roll. Uh, you can roll a check at upper hand uh, to see to see the sense of it. See if you can sense something. But you got to burn a grip um, because this means like you're trying to tap into your power to raise something. Okay, I shouldn't yet. Okay. Just in case I have to actually heal someone later. Okay. Yet. All right. Um, you do see that the cave. It's you know it's not too winding, but it's a little curves here and there. But it also splinters out into different directions. There's a couple cave-ins here and there. You haven't noticed any signs of people, but you do hear voices um, up ahead, around a bend. Uh, 
so like would we, would we be able to notice like any footprints and like the dust on the floor or anything like that or is it just you your standard you notice no footprints at all okay Maybe it's just noggin and he's arguing with someone let's go find out yeah uh i'll leave the group since i've got my shield and my armor and the lantern and i'll just try and follow wherever the sound of the voices is coming from okay so you, you head forward um bypass some of the apartments and things and you curve around the back of the uh the back of this cave and you can see that it opens up onto a fairly large circular room that's depressed down like you're on a ledge looking down to some sort of you would imagine is is like a like a meeting area some kind of huge dwelling for like pre you know pre-human people in the middle of this cave and there's a handful of these other alcoves on the top ledge that you're now on and when you look down into that large circular depression um you can see there's about a dozen floating green blue ram skulls and you can hear them they're they're yelling back and forth to one another um you you hear somebody yelling like like and i found something much better on the east we could go east we could go don't we can go further up into the and they're all yelling like but we've been here forever they're the ones who should have to leave not us. Why should we leave? Like, well, because anything we do to them doesn't seem to help. They ignore us. It's like we're not even there. Just a lot of crazed, <laughs> crazed arguing between these glowing ram skulls. Do any of the glowing ram skulls look familiar to me, or are they all fairly similar? Just <laughs> call out for Noggin. I, yeah, I was gonna call out for Noggin. Okay. So you call so, yeah, out. I'll just okay. Be like, Noggin, you uh, you down there? And like you, you all of them. <laughs> turn and look and you have now like a dozen ram skulls glowing green and blue and some of them are shrieking like ah, there they are they are and then one of them's like no 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 wait 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 and this one just goes <laughs> comes flying up onto the ledge gets right up into your face kind of cocks their head to the right and then just sort of keeps spinning right i recognize this one and that one and, and that one they uh these 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 ones helped me out of a well kind of helped me out of a bit of a gem. Uh yeah, we didn't uh, get, well, didn't realize there were so many of you hanging out in these uh in this grotto. There used to be more. Used to be yeah, more. Yeah, you you said something about puppets? <sighs> yes, yes, these are the ones. These are the ones that can help us. They can help us. Yes, they can help us. Ah uh, yes. Uh, in the other uh, How okay. do you whisper if you don't have lungs? Like these large <laughs> dark sockets. <laughs> Is now really the time for this? <laughs> um, but they sc- he screams down and they're like, they're corporeal, corporeal. Oh yes, yes, we need help. We need help. In the other, in the other cave, our other home, uh, uh, our preferred home. They, they're there. They, they won't leave. They're making a home. They're building. It's just a matter of time before they come and they expand over here every day. More and more show. More and more. Their hair and their sadness. And it's just infecting us. Ugh, it's terrible. But we can't do anything about it. And like you can see... Is that he, he kind of curves past you a little bit, kind of... You can tell he's incorporeal a bit. He's got a skull, but it, like, you're not sure if it's all there. They just ignore us. They pretend we're not there. But... Like, but... And there's an echo of, like, 11 more of them down there. They're like, but, 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 but... And it's all echoing. If you help us... Well, they couldn't ignore you, could they? No. Oh. What exactly do you need us to do? Oh, nothing much. And then you hear them start to echo. Nothing much at all. Nothing much. Nothing at all. It's nothing Ew. at all. It's not fun at all. Oh. Yeah, we're in a murder cult now. <laughs> if you would let us into you, we could work together to get rid of them. 
I turned to sister uh, Sophie and I'm like, uh, is it safe to let another soul inside of you? I'm not an expert in this. We can help. We can prevent you from getting infected. We should maybe not all try that, but definitely me. You can you can enter <laughs> you can enter me. We 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 mean you no harm. We're just trying to help, and and it's our way of, of helping you. Infected from what? The hair. Do you want to become one of them too? Could you? I think one of us might already get be. hair out of people. No, we can't heal. We're just ghosts of ram skulls. Don't be ridiculous. Of course, we can't do that, but we can inhabit you. And if we're inside you, then well, the hair can't get inside you. Do you understand? Kind of yeah, I'm cool really with close. it. Uh, if Sophie's okay with it. I, I, I guess I could do it too. But this is a, uh, I'm, this is weird. What's so special about the other side? Well, that's where we used to live, and then they showed up, and there was more of us, and then they are growing their numbers by the day. More and more show, and they weep, and they wander, and they're making homes now, and then they're pretty soon there's going to be too many of them, and they're going to need more space, and then they're going to come here, and this is our home. We've been here all our lives. Well, our afterlives, that is not important. Well, the highest bidder, then. And Catrick's going to uh, kind of pipe up and say, so do you think you would be able to also help us fight one of the larger creatures, like one of the snakes or, um, say, the Silas, even? Mm. Kind of actually cutting this off at the source instead of just fighting small things on the ground. Sophie's going to pipe up. Are we really concerned about that? Do you guys know any treasure we could get? Do, do we know? Treasure. You've been here for forever, you know? Well, there is a tomb to the north that is, well, where a, a very mm, wealthy, wealthy man, he buried a small private force who worked for him, um, the Ram King. Uh, what he called himself, centuries old, centuries old. Very lucrative finds inside. Perhaps okay. we could tell you where it is. Are you, like gems lucrative or like lucrative to a ram? No, it wasn't a ram. That was, was just his, you know, you know how people sometimes get like, you know, some kind of thing to represent them. Yeah. It's like a symbol. Oh, okay, okay. Right, right, right. So, here's yeah, the, um, mm, uh, treasures, gold, gems, yes, all sorts of wonderful things. Uh, sounds like we're in business, then. Yeah. And that works, too. We could remain within you, and we could help you find the place, and we could help you remain healthy while within the valley. When you leave our bodies, will that kill us? <laughs> no, don't be ridiculous. Why would that happen? Just just double checking. Can I do yeah. some sort of a check on that? Uh, what do you mean? like Verify the accuracy of that statement. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, An insight check. <laughs> you're looking to assess if they're, if they're telling the truth. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead and roll a wits check. 11. Uh, they're not lying, but you can tell that there's something they're not telling you. They're, they're withholding something. Yeah, uh, they're so withholding just... location of the treasure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm so cool with them entering my body, so, like, mm. you know, I've lost my brains. Orion doesn't understand magic. He just looks to his peers. <laughs> 
I don't really know magic either. I just know I can raise the dead. He thinks you do, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like that crazy lady who's just like... <laughs> Is it a TV show or a movie where like you can touch the dead? Oh, that's a... Pushing a daisies? Show. Yeah, Pushing Daisies. Aww, yes. I remember Pushing Daisies. Ugh. You're thinking of Phantasm starring Michael J. Fox. That's what you're thinking, Phantasms. No. No, it wasn't Phantasms. No, it was definitely Pushing Daisies. Someone with Michael J. Fox? I know what you're yeah. talking about. Oh, what was that called? I remember Phantasm that. Phantasm was something completely there different. There was Blue Oyster Cult. <laughs> Fant- isn't Phantasms the Dean Koontz one? Isn't Phantasms yeah, the Dean Koontz story? Or, like, or is that Phantoms? Like okay, we're getting off track. All right. Um, Anyways, Polar Bears. Anyways, polar bear. <laughs> so Ketrick wants to follow up and just say, okay. so is the thing you're not telling us where the treasure is, or is the thing you're not telling us that we're actually going to be worse off when you leave our bodies later? Well, we're not telling you where it is yet, of course. Yeah? Yes, that one. Mm. No, no, you'll be fine when we leave your bodies. Nothing to worry about. What about, so you said we'll be fine when you leave our bodies, but yes. what about when you're in our bodies? You'll be, you'll be fine. You'll be protected from infections. How easy well, is you... it to get you to leave? Do I just tell you that you're going to leave and then you leave? Well, we'll leave when it's right to leave. Uh-huh. When That's incredibly slow, vague. Do you leave when I say you're going to leave? Or do you leave when you think it's time to leave? Well, we we'll... We'll believe when it's appropriate for both you and I, or, or you and us, to leave. This is so. Catrick kind of looks back to the group and say, "I'm only going to be on board if you leave when I say you leave." Fine, fine. Not There's no reason to get ready. to get so upset. We weren't not being malicious in any way. We just. I've been wandering the world in this body for a long time. I kind of like it. A and long time not to have company if it's not invited. And they all and they're like a long time, a long time, a long time. <laughs> and <laughs> you don't know long time. We've been here for longer, but it's not here. That, yes, of course we'll leave when when you when you say it's time for us to leave. We will leave, of course. Thank you. And so then I'll turn to everybody and say that I am now on board. And then <laughs> one of them swoops into cat track at that point. You just feel like a oh. this wheel. <laughs> I imagine just like that scene from Space Jam where the uh, talent goes in and out of people. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you can hear a little voice in the back of your head. Oh, this is very comfortable. Very comfortable indeed. Oh, oh you're shorter than I thought. Oh, 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 I haven't felt hands in a while. Like your hands are kind of moving without like. Uh, can you just get oh. situated? Just, please, I just, you know, please. when you're incorporeal for so long, it's just, it's such a wonderful feeling. Ugh. And then, like, you start seeing a little cat track, dude, like a little jig, like a shake, 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 shake. Yeah, like that. I'm going to be a total pain in the ass. I'm going to go over to one of the cave walls and just sort of, like, kick my foot into it. Okay. Uh, just... Okay. Take one point of damage. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do that? That's, that's, oh, it hurt both of us. It's smart. Oh. This is what happens when you have a body, just giving you the full experience. You harm it intentionally? That seems very stupid. We haven't had bodies for ages. If we did, we would certainly treat them better than you. Just wait till we have a drink later. Orion, not knowing what to do, just kind of like does like a T pose essentially, or like just holds his hands out. And it's like okay, you uh, see a, a couple I'm, of them. I'm ready. A couple of them come up, and one of them's like, "No, this one's mine." And this really large, wide, ugly looking ram skull. Oh, this oh, no. one will do nicely. Ah! And it just comes <laughs> swarming in, takes you over, and you just feel. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, guys, I think I'm gonna throw up. Oh. I was a powerful warrior once. You, you are modest, but you have potential. Oh, goodness. Gah. Oh, you haven't shat in ages. You really should eat more vegetables. Oh. <laughs> uh. I just imagine, like, Horian's, like, pecs are just flexing under the breastplate of his plate mail. <laughs> exactly. <It's> just <laughs> like, <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> yes. Mm. I need a mirror somewhere to look at how wonderful I look. Who's next? I'll start running in the opposite direction. The first one to get me 
gets me. Okay. It's like three of them just chase after you, like, we're gonna get you. Oh, we will. And then one of them, like, just you as you're running, you just feel it come right into your ass. You're like, ooh. <laughs> 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 Not the way I want it to coincide, but this will do. Ooh. Aren't you a little weakling? Ooh. Ooh. I think I got the effective one. This one. Very. De- oh. Awful. Oh. Oh. Goodness. Oh. The pain. I feel the pain in my back. What is that? Oh, goodness. Oh. oh this will do. I suppose. Uh, when you've been in Comporto so long, you shouldn't. Uh, so long, you shouldn't. Uh, you shouldn't complain, I suppose. And then so Sophie, that just leaves O'Hare. Oh, yeah, Sophie, Sophie too. And me. Yeah, one of them is going to go in inside Sophie, and you hear, and no one else hears this. <gasps> you have very peculiar temptations. Ooh, I like this one. <laughs> you and I are going to be great friends. Great and, friends. And Sophie's like, you can hang out with me as long as you want. <laughs> Goodness. I'm very excited. Very excited indeed. One of them comes up to O'Hare, goes right up to him. And, oh, and this say, one reeks. I say, come inside me. <laughs> no, no, thank you. No, <laughs> this one's already got the taint, I think. And mm, yeah, oh. he definitely has hair in him. I can smell it all over him. Mm. Uh. Can you, like, throw it up or something, or, like, pull it out, or... No, the only way to prevent the infection from spreading too far is for him to leave the valley in the... In the general proximity to hair will only increase its vigor. The infection seems very new. It hasn't spread too far yet. He's not, he's not so far along that he's too far gone. If he's here for more than a few days, however, I imagine things will not go well for him. It'll constrict if- around its heart and just rip it apart. Oh. So it's not, oh. like, confined to a limb that we could chop off? Mm. That was your solution? No. Horian had the same idea when he saw it go into his right or left arm, whichever it was. Like, well, I'm gonna chop it off. Uh, no, I think it's, uh, I think it's spread. Yeah, it just hasn't got a firm footing, but it's got no, it's got hooks into a variety of places, this one. Can't you smell it? And all of you can kind of smell it. You can kind of smell, you look over at O'Hare, he kind of stinks a little. He's like, ooh. Ugh. Oh. It's like you're going to a petting zoo or something. Ooh. What is that? O'Hare, when was the last time you bathed? It's been a long time! <laughs> Maybe you should look in. Do you have water in this cave? Uh, there's a pool in the other one. I mean... Take a celebratory dip after we complete our mission. I feel kind of left out, but being the only one that doesn't have one side of them, it's pretty great because I'm pretty unique. And that's what being an adventure is about, you know? This he's one's... only being so positive because we're pretty positive he's dying. <laughs> <laughs> and then only to Sophie you hear um, the world might might miss him I, I, I don't know <laughs> you just gotta have a positive attitude and attack the world every day hopefully he can just hang in there and everything will be just fine just fine so what's the game plan Let's go they lead us to them. the grotto yes murder oh. them Rip them apart. We are in the grottos. This is one and another. Or wherever the puppets are. Sorry, I'm confused. I've got two brains now. That's okay. Your brain isn't very big to begin with. Uh, maybe so since I let you in, but we'll work with it for now. It's okay. We're going to do wonderful things together. It'll be just fine. All right. So they start leading you back out. And they, you know, they're telling you in your in your in your brains um all of you can only hear your own like they're not vocally anymore a few of the other ones that didn't and that didn't inhabit uh one of you follow along for a while and they're kind of talking vocally as well um but they describe how at first it was just a few 
And then it was more and more. And then over the last few weeks and weeks, it's just grown and grown and grown. Like as the population of Bromwell dwindled, the population here increased. And then they keep coming from the village. And now, now it's just become untenable. Do so, they eat people? No, they don't eat people. Necess- no, they're just... They're Were just... they people before? Well, I'm, I would imagine so, yes. They're just, but they're just, they're, they're just here, and they're taking up so much space, and they're... Uh, and eventually they're going to take our... They took one of our homes, and now they're taking... You know, it's like they've moved into your house, into the living room, and a couple of the bedrooms, and like they just left you the one bedroom, and it's very, it's very frustrating. Like we, we were here first, firsties. It's fair. It'll be do fun. they do that gets in your way Sorry. though? They, okay, we lived there. They showed <laughs> up and pushed us out. I don't you know if I can make this any food. But, I mean, if you're incorporeal, I guess I'm just confused how it affects you. Oh, if you have a home, do you just enjoy it? If we were here incorporeally in your home all the time, would you enjoy it? Would you get annoyed by us after a while, gibbering, jabbering all the time, moving all over the place? It would annoy you, would it not? Yeah, but it exactly. seems like this is a big valley. Why can't exactly. you just Exactly. Why can't they go somewhere else? We were here first. We, it's not like we came down and took over their village from... It's not like we came down and took over their village. They come here and they're taking over our home. This is not very complicated. Gotcha. Right, you're completely in the right here, so let's take them out. Thank you. I'm so very happy that you said that. Jeff's going to have difficulty remembering the forces I use for each of these. <laughs> so <laughs> they lead you into the other cave. The other cave uh, goes winding down and, and is very much like the one that you just saw. There's a series of small alcoves along the way. Um, and in some of these alcoves, you can see uh, people. Uh, when you peer in, I mean, they look like people, more or less, um, but they're made from hair. And you can see a few of them are, like, sitting down at a table. Um, you see one is holding, like, a baby in a some kind of blanket or cloth, and it's just, just it's kind of singing a, a small, quiet lullaby. And you see others Does that Does that sound like a male or female voice? Sounds like a female voice. I guess I'll ask oh. the phantom in my head. I got you also. Uh, so uh, what if <clears throat> what if we just try to convince them to move into the cave you guys are living in right now, and then you have this one back? They're both ours. There were very many of us, and because they're here, there's fewer of us, and now we have to get both back, and then we can bring the rest of our families home. Okay. Burn them all. Burn every single last one of them. What's the, do they look actually human, or they you yeah. can see the hair? They're bipedal. They look like human. They're they're made from hair. They're just like human beings, but they're made from oh, hair. Okay. Yeah. It's like the human shaped ones in the graveyard mm-hmm. that we lit on fire. Yeah. Yeah. So Ketrick's going to kind of say to the one that's kind of in her head. Um, so if you told us that with O'Hare we just need to get him out of the valley for a while and he'll be better. Can't we just get all these people to leave the valley for a while, and then they would not be hair people anymore? If you want to try... It seems like a better solution than slaughtering all of them. We have tried to talk to them for weeks, and they don't listen to anything we say. They meander around doing whatever it is they want to do. If you think that... What What happens when you try and talk with them? Do they literally not listen or do they just yell back or do what listen. they want they just move about they don't seem to care or we try to scare them out Ooh, that didn't seem to work <laughs> they weren't scared of us <clears throat> they just <clears throat> they're squatters is what they are and they need to leave 
So Katrick will look back to the group and just say, should we try talking first before we light them all on fire and kill them all? Uh, I'm for it. Uh, I'm not a total homicidal maniac yet. Just kill them. So does Sophie silent because she <laughs> wants to kill people. <laughs> you guys killed the poachers earlier. What's this any different? You just took him out. These guys are just like me. Well, see, Leon, poachers are disrupting the animal husbandry that's going on in this valley, and that village is dilapidated enough. Whereas incorporeal skulls getting into a uh, turf war with hair monsters is a little outside of my area of expertise. Turfa, this was our home. They moved here, and now they won't leave. <laughs> yeah, but if we could Turfle. just convince them to leave... <laughs> They won't listen. Well, you've never asked Patrick's them with the stage. giant sword. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> uh, so who else yeah, to try I'll have you guys about? ready by and to light up the place, and I'll head in. I'll give a signal if it doesn't go well. <laughs> that sounds good to me. All right. So I'll head in when everyone else will just be ready, I guess. Uh, so is there a particular type of person, hair puppet, you're looking for? Um, like, again, there's there, there are all these little alcoves, and you're passing down kind of a central cave entrance, and then, like, there's different ways that kind of branch out. Um, a few of them look up at you from time to time. You don't see them. It's like you see these empty black sockets where their eyes used to be. Um, but is there something in particular you're looking for? Not just anyone that's nearby, like, hey there. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> hang on. There we go. Okay. So you, you walk up to an alcove and you can see that there's, one of them has like a broom and it's just sit, sitting there and it's, or standing there and just like kind of cleaning out this alcove. And you say, hey there, and they look up at you. Got this weird, kind of strange, fibrous look on their faces. You can see the little... <laughs> fibrous. Yeah. And then they stare, twist, twist their heads a little bit, and then kind of it comes back down in this awkward motion, and they just go back to sweeping the floor. Uh, not, not the talkative type, I see. He's the burnative type. Wait, so are we, are we down there with Leon, or did Leon go in solo? And we're the he went into one of the alcoves. Out. You all are still in the main, the main cave, and the main cave uh, route. Okay. It just they seem consumed with whatever it is that they're doing. I like trying to be quiet for some reason because Horian just doesn't get it. Like whisper yells down to you. Tell him he can sweep somewhere else. Just point to the down that way. And... <laughs> so, uh, can you guys leave here? You've taken up space that someone used to live here. Whoosh. Whoosh. Are they actually sweeping or anything? Or are they, they are, in fact, sweeping the ground. It doesn't look like they're doing it. It's like you're in a freaking dusty cave, though, so it's like... Okay. It's sort of like a moot point, but they're doing it. I'll just back out and tell them, yeah, these guys are right. They don't do anything. What if uh, what if I piss one off and then have it chase me out of the valley? I can run for a while unless uh, old floaty in here can't run that well and slows me down. Just start pushing one and see what oh, happens. Oh, I'll do that. If it just goes in the <laughs> Florian just pushing. strolls into the cave. Okay. Uh, again, is there like a particular type I'll go of... up to the sweeping one since I saw Leon talking to them. Okay. And like remembering how, even though I'm not a people person, I used to be a knight, so I understand chivalry. So I'll like put the like, you know, like you're guiding your elderly grandmother across the crosswalk. I'll put like a gentle arm and like try to gently like. Okay. Move him with me, or they, them with me. They kind of move as well, and they're sweeping the whole time. Sweeping. And they'll make it all the way into the main hallway of the cave here. But then the minute you try to push them any further, they just go completely rigid. Like, to the point where it's actually hard to push against them. They don't feel easy to knock over. And you can see that they're trying to work their way back into the alcove that they just came from. 
Uh, Horium will try and like squat down and see if they'll uh, piggyback. Uh, no, I don't think so. I understand. Okay, like I'll carry you. They're no, they're they're actively pushing in their way back into the alcove that you just drew them out of. Okay. Um, could I try and like pick them up, like you know, wedding bride style, whatever that's called? Of course. Like, sweep them off their feet. Yeah. Uh, roll a brawn check. Uh, yeah, you try to pick them up, but they move about enough that they. They squirm a bit. They're made of hair. They're a little bit more lithe, and like you think you grab them, they just kind of slink out of your grasp. You can spend a grip if you want to re-roll the one with exertion. Uh, yeah, I'll give it a try. I want to see what happens. Yeah, just roll d6. So yeah, all you need to do is roll down. two, and you should be fine. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> enough. And you pick them up, and you hear like this sound emit from their mouths like and Horian will start making that sound back to him because he thinks he's going to sue them with it so he'll also go all and then all of the other ones in the other caves begin to start slowly like traipsing out and you start hearing and these long mouths that open up a little bit longer and wider than human mouths would, or is like the echo of the sound comes out of it. You look inside, you see like, you don't see like tongue or teeth. It's just this empty vacuous space from which this sound is emitting. It's kind of unsettling. And all of them begin to slowly creep in on you. And you can see that there's some that are squat and heavy, and there's some that are tall and lithe, like an array of different body types that you would see in any old village. You see the one that is carrying this like this little bundle of a baby, and although she seems to be emitting some kind of sound, there's nothing that's coming from this swaddling of, of, of baby. And there's slowly one one by one all these alcoves are filled and deeper into the cave as the sound begins to echo and you're just you're you're becoming swarmed. Like there there's Yeah, so when I see them make their way toward me, would I be able to while holding this thing, am I able to jog toward the mouth of the cave or like walk at least, or am I? Yeah, too you can encumbered? do whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do they seem so, to be like, focused on him only, or like, are they looking at us at all? I mean, like they're they're unsettled at this point. They all just seem to be moving into the main thoroughfare of the cave at this point. I ask the floaty head voice, um, uh, "What does this sound mean? And uh, is this a good just, thing? Just kill him! Kill him! Burn it! Burn it! Burn them all!" Bad him. I mean, uh, they haven't been hostile yet. They just seem to like to growl. Burn him. Your, your friend has already been infected by one that is hostile to you there. That is a fair point, but uh, I don't know. And they're, they're moving up like slow moving, you know, Romero zombies. Um, you guys have to decide to do something. I mean, if you want to pick them up and run away with them, that's fine, but there's more here than there are of you guys, so what are the rest of you doing? Can I understand them? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> um, because I am like one of them? You, you're only a day into Ooh. your infection. Um, so you do kind of sense some emotion but you don't uh, you can't quite get clarity of thought from them but there's definite there's definite like they're definitely unsettled they're definitely angered um at the the kind of invasion that is that is that Horian is now um has, has now essentially begun and there's a, a rage that's beginning to start to, to grow it's it's getting stronger and stronger but you can't get clear thoughts for them yet but you are getting like baseline emotions is there any way that i can communicate with them to settle them because of my ability like is there a way i can maybe check that i can uh yeah you don't again you're only a day into your infection so you're not you're not as far along you can tell by the way that they're different than you you yeah, they're they're different from you. When you look at them, they're just all hair. Like it's not like you where you have into. There's something different. Um, 
you don't get the sense that they a lot of them seem confused um, there is like an underlying sort of sadness and confusion about them um, but as you like as you try to like you put your fingers to your temple and you try to communicate with them like read my mind doesn't seem to work no um, but I will say that you also feel like a a kind of a you don't feel like you want to harm them like I would say like there's there's in you in your mind like the idea of harming them is 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 so far removed from you know something you would probably normally want to do I don't want to like I don't want to like run your character but like there is something about that connection that you now feel um it's there's yeah there's something a little deeper in there as if if, if you feel harming them you specifically would be very difficult to do um i guess i'm gonna get in between can I get in between him and the person that he kind of accosted absolutely and separate them and say guys 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 these guys are cool okay they're upset i they're not i don't understand what it's like to be upset because i'm happy all the time but these guys they're upset so let's let's calm down i'll turn over to to horian and i just I'm like no no i'm looking at them i'm always looking at him like no 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 so i no no and i like, pick up his hand and like slap it like no no back him up and i'm sitting there i'm like it's okay everything is oh hair i don't understand i thought we were asked to empty the caves of the skull people. i said no well, yes, I, yes. I, that doesn't kill them burn them just wait your your stupid you small a... friend is ruining everything just relax let's see if we can be diplomatic that's not why leaves. we're taking them to a new town. Yeah, but you, you picked one up like a psychopath. They're not really going to be thrilled. <laughs> oh, I'll show you psychopath. And I'm like, just, I got a sword I can swing around. Just relax for a second. You big dumb idiot. All right, so. <laughs> let's, just, let's just let's just let's talk. Relax. I won't have a good time. Sophie's looking at Catrack like, mm mm. And she's like slowly reaching into her pack for like a torch and she's just, it's unlit, but she's holding it. Yes. Drick's going to kind of wave her off um, and just say like, Horian, I think he's right that taking one out is just angering the rest of them. So we're going to have to fight all of them. So maybe we put him back and see oh, if they'll just go back to ignoring us and that might make this easier. But if we get him in a big swarm and you guys want to burn them or murder them, that would Stop. make it easier. Talking yes. about murdering. Yes, now we're thinking tactically. They're Bring people. Them They're just like me. You want to burn me? You know what? Don't answer that question. Sometimes. Okay. Anyways. Sophie, I think, that I think a you better should burn them all and burn the little one too. Yes, Bernie, yes. Bernie, fire, fire. I think some of us know that fire is not a great idea all the time. What if we get uh, some kindling and like have it set up and then get them to chase us and then light them and the extra kindling on the ground on fire? You don't think you can get just light the torch and burn them? Burn them now! The exact opposite of what I'm trying to say. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. I'm saying no burn. But then what no do we do with the skull people? Today's not a no burn day. It's fine. <laughs> but. Arizona Joe. But it could be a no burn day if we try and deal with this in a diplomatic fashion. What's your what? solution? As I angrily set the broom sweeper down and look at the short one for answers. So you guys are concerned that these are people? Yes. That they've just yeah. been turned into hair people and killing them means killing all the people that are no longer in town because they're up here for whatever reason that we haven't figured out what's drawing them here. There is a lady with a hair baby. <laughs> you want to burn a hair baby? That's a baby. Let's I cut one. my hair regularly and it never ever has any issues with it. So I'm. Let's just I'm, relax and try and figure this out a non Bernie way, you know? What is the reaction of the group now that uh, Sweeping Man has been set back on his own two feet? There's an apprehension. They're still here and they're. they're... Like the they have stopped their weird sound a bit, but they are hulking nearby, and they seem like they're blocking your advancement further into the cave or into any of the alcoves mm. at this point. I I, I get him. To, I get him from I'm like it's okay, everything's fine. I'm gonna try to like shove him into the group and see what happens. Like okay. just a little bit. Well, okay. I was gonna walk in. Okay. 
Well, no, she shoved you. So you, <laughs> you get shoved in the group, and you just stumble into a few of these, <laughs> and, like, you fall down to the ground. One of them reaches, and, like, underneath your armpits and just sort of pulls you back up onto your feet. Thanks. See? It's okay. Right. Says okay, the infected. So, so look in there and see if you see anything that might be, like calling them inside something they're trying to protect or something in there all right but you guys gotta promise me no bernie bernie okay no well, fire fire no feeling hurry the, the hell up okay just let me just give me a second okay I'll go walk in there sure. and what, what you want yeah you that? wander further in and they they part for you like don't even pay attention they just kind of let you pass no problem and yeah you, you work your way down and you come to a room uh, a large circular kind of cave opening that's been carved away similar to what you saw in the other one and you can see there's apartments and stuff like little alcoves set up there's more of these creatures in here you can see that it's almost like the little village has formed there's stuff that's been built here um, you can see like shelves have been built tables chairs it's like this it's, it's like a almost like a recreation of some of the rooms that you saw in Bromwell can't look any deeper. Is sure. Any, what are you looking for? Just, um, maybe like a main center, like a town hall, something. Where yeah, it's it's important. still a cave, so it's not like as wide open. But no, I mean, like you don't really see like separate buildings as much as you see just like different groupings of furniture here and there in this big, large, circular cave opening. And then there's smaller, like individual rooms. I would say the main thing that you're learning from this that you're freely getting is that they have started to like build a village here like literally have been building things um out of hair or actual no. things no, yeah actual chair things. made out of hair That'd no, be great. stuff just like you see you see like wood you see salvaged equipment you see stuff like that is there maybe a place where they are centered at like or are they all towards where i came from well at this point most of them have already left and there's a few that are lingering back that are look to be consumed with whatever specific tasks that they're doing but if you're looking for some sort of like magical crystal that they're all kind of no there's nothing like that this is just a village it's it's just a village it's literally all that you're that's all you have learned and all you will learn from coming and looking around all right so they have sentience and they have a sense of community in life so what else could I look for? Um, uh, does it look, is there any like distinguishing features that this might actually be the people from the town? Okay. Um, Maybe clothing or, or, or markings or furniture or something around that would be similar to what we saw in the town. Roll a will check. Okay. Um, a lot of will. We'll say this. You start to get the feeling it kind of dawns on you for a moment. So you start to put a few things together. That The first time you saw these, they were crawling up out of like the ground in this large graveyard uh, near the village. It starts to dawn on you that maybe these aren't necessarily the people who were infected like who somehow magically turned into hair puppets, but rather the kind of the corpses or the spirits even of those who are departed that have like risen and taken on this sort of animated form as if by the hair kind of landing on the graveyard, like the, the lingering spirits of those who had passed have somehow entered into the hair and found physical form once more. All right, I'm gonna take this information. And it's, it's just a theory you have, like you don't have any specific evidence, but like it's it's noodling around in your brain right now. I'm gonna take this hypothesis and come back to the group, and I'll explain it the same way you did, because I'm afraid I'm not gonna be able to do the same way you did, because I'm a big idiot. It? That's fine, dude. You're not well, that guy's an idiot. It. You're a beautiful man. Okay. So exposition dump. Okay. And then you guys hear yeah, it. Yeah, he basically, yeah. So the basically, his theory is like, he he doesn't think, like we saw, you saw how big Bromwell was. There's no way there were this many people in Bromwell at the same time. Like, and we found him in the graveyard, and like, maybe, maybe these are the departed, the dead, 
that have risen up again. Catrack, as O'Hare is explaining this, mm-hmm. you seem to remember when you spoke with a drunken man who was holding a baby and staring at a noose who mentioned how his wife had recently died, leaving him mm. as a father. And you, you, don't, you didn't see, nor did you know of any other babies in this relatively small village. And you see a woman in here kind of holding a baby. A baby holding. that didn't make any noise. Mm-hmm. Can I go uh, fake over baby. to that woman? Uh, roll a wits check to see as you get close to see whether or not she's going to. Yeah. You get nice. close and she will shy away from you at that point And then mm-hmm. others, you can spend, you can spend exertion if you want to re-roll any of those die, of course. Yeah, I will. Okay. So two points. Going to re-roll both die. Uh, yeah. Mm, bits too. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. We still actually have one bit, uh, one, uh, mm-hmm. one re-roll left. If you want to roll, a, do a re-roll for free. No uh, then I'll do that. Yeah. I'll yeah. Do, do, the do the free roll. Okay. Uh, now, if you wanted to, you can spend some grip to re-roll like the two or the three. Okay. You need a nine, so it's up to you. If you wanted to spend Oh, go point. ahead and spend the two. Okay, so you're going to do another re-roll, basically. So go ahead. Third try is the charm. There we go. Nine. Okay, so you, you start getting a little bit closer. The whole time, you can hear the voice of the spectral ram's head in your head telling you that what you're doing is like, you fool, what's wrong with you? Burn them. Just burn them and be done with it. They're abominations. Shut up. Be patient. Shut up. Don't tell me to shut up. I'll just talk all day long. You can't stop me. There's something you could do to get me out. I can get out whenever I want, not what you want. And then as you get close, the, uh, like you, you're, you're kind of, your hands are up at this point. Mm-hmm. Maybe O'Hare is like nodding a little bit and kind of letting them. And so, yeah, you, you come over and you can see there is a, um, there's a little bundle and they take a look at the bundle. And as you look inside, um, yeah, you can see that there's a, a sleeping baby. Um, just sleeping. Just. You guys were going to burn a living baby. I'm going to try to very carefully see if I can... Mm. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can try to coax the baby out of her arms. Uh... Yeah, I mean, you're not going to be able to coax the baby out of the arms. Um, you also notice, like, I mean, you're going to have to forcefully do it. Like, Yeah, but like, I want to do it slowly until I kind of have a bit of kind of my arm around and then move more quickly. Okay, I mean, roll, roll a wits check to try to do it, like, try yeah. to do it deftly. Nice. Okay. You kind of carefully, like, you're looking down. And you notice, by the way, that there's, like, you know, there's... There's a little bit of tufts of like fur coming out of the nose of the baby here and there, and like in the ear, and you snatch the baby, and then all of a sudden that <laughs> starts to echo throughout all the others, um, and they are gonna lash out at you. Um, I'll roll over your witch check, and she, the 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 one that you just took it from, will swipe at you as you run and step away. And um, I'm just gonna yell like, "I'm gonna run. You can burn the rest. I'm okay with it." Okay. <laughs> So, Katrek, who's going next? We're in initiative, basically, now. So, Katrek, you just, that's your turn to snatch the baby and run. Who's going next? Yes. Um, I'm going to say... Um, Torian, did you have a torch out? Uh, yes, I have three torches in my, in my pack. Um, I don't have any out right Someone now. Someone has to I have could. one out or else no yes. one would be able to see else... any of this going down. Well, I had so... one, okay. but I thought somebody else had okay. a lamp out. All right. Well, then, no, he had taken his uh, his bullseye lantern out in the other yeah. cave. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do oh. you still have that out? My bullseye lantern? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So he, would has, the, he has the lantern okay. out. Okay. Horian goes next. Okay, Horian, you're up. Um. Okay, so... Would I, could I take a regular torch and stick it in the lantern and then throw it at like the nearest group in one turn or would taking a torch out and then lighting it kind of be the action? So you're carrying, so you're carrying the lantern. You've got a big right. old sword on your back. 
you've now got a sword on your belt or you know like one of one of your weapons is is going to have to be inaccessible uh if you're carrying a oh yeah uh, yeah i wasn't using any of the weapons i was going to okay. take like the torch out of the backpack that i have and just okay. light it that's fine. from the lantern that's and fine. throw that so yeah. we'll say you reach into your your like not you know, so you have no no weapon in your hands then you you know no shield right, yeah, no it's weapons just, it's just right yeah you reach in you grab the torch and you throw the torch okay sure um roll a witch check to see if you can throw it decently to a good chunk of them obviously it's gonna and you do <laughs> <laughs> and you absolutely do uh okay um roll three d sixes and take the higher the highest of the okay. three okay we're just kind of making that up as we go here yeah uh, um... oh boy two damage oh two <laughs> one of them so you throw it into a group they they quickly shuffle all of them seem suddenly terrified o'hare you just you just hear rage and fear wash through your brain at this point at the sight of this baby being taken and of the fire being thrown at them and one of them gets caught on one of them yeah catches fire but doesn't burst into these crazy flames um right what are you doing are you moving um, I want to stay near the mouth of the cave in case they try to swarm around, but okay. I have two more torches in my pack, so I'll basically for my next turn just okay. kind of be reaching into my backpack. Again. So you'll you'll back up a little bit, but you're not like going into a full sprint like Catrack was. All right, who do you want to go next? Right. Um, we'll have um Sophie go next. Sophie, what do you want to do? And the whole time, this this voice in your head has been going on about just bend them all. And once you're done, I'll show you so many wonderful things. Power. Uh, more than you might ever, ever learn. Otherwise, do you want to know about what happens after death? Do you want to know the secret to living long? Like, just tempting you with all these, mm. like, arcane, necromantic promises. Okay. Uh, yeah, and Sophie will take the bait. Um... She is going to spend a point of grip to see if there's any corpses I can manually animate. Yeah, you sense and you don't sense any corpses in the area. Okay. So they are just like spirits and stuff if it is that. Yeah. Does um, does lend credence to the theory that these are spirits animating these puppets of hair. Okay. Uh then I think that's it for my turn because it's an action. Okay. And Do you want to move or anything? Trip. Right now, like there's a wave of these things. Or probably a dozen or more of these things are going to be coming at you all. Uh, Sophie's going to move back. Okay, so you start hustling back towards Catrack in Horian. Who's going next, Sophie? Um, so Catrack went... Uh, I will have O'Hare go next. All right. O'Hare, what do you want to do? Um, so where am I in the group? Are we all kind of together? Uh, yeah, everyone's kind of together. Can I run, uh, ahead of everybody? Yeah, you can run. You can just use your turn to just, if you want to do two, two runs, you can run away. Yeah. You can okay. just, yeah, you just bolt and you run and you just hear like anger and sadness and fear just like coming through that little link it's almost overwhelming you at this point especially since it's raw and it's unclear and you feel like you almost hear a voice every now and then but it's just too far off it's like it's like a radio that's filled with static and noise but every now and then has a blip of a voice it just doesn't come through um but you run and you run and you 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 push past katrick and hori and, and sophie and you're out in front who do you want to go next uh we'll have um leonga all right, Leon. I'll just escape. Okay. As you're running, you hear in the voice, like, just, you have torches. Burn them. What's wrong with you? God, you. I oh, got the defective one. They were letting up. Just with this. A little bit. Horian threw, um, and one of them got hit. Uh, I can light and then throw one and run. Yeah, go ahead. Roll a witch check. See if you can get a decent throw into it big group of them nah, i've been failing okay you throw it and it kind of lands on the ground uh and you can see they scatter away from it and they back <gasps> definitely afraid of it they'd have to step over top of it but you don't actually hit any of them who do you want to go next it's either gonna be actually no since all of you went again. no it's not they go oh and they sure. get to go two times in a row <laughs> so the wave of these creatures, uh, these these puppet creatures, are gonna 
are going to start lumbering toward all of you, um, with the exception of O'Hare. And uh, I said there's about a dozen of them. Uh, and I'm going to see if any of them uh, are going to run into the any of the fire or anything that's going on. So, go. All right. Uh, one of them is going to step onto accidentally as they're pushing past one another. Uh, the fire, uh, the torch laying on the ground. A couple of them bump into each other. You see several of them now have little tufts of flames that are beginning to burn. Uh, but they're still able, with two turns, to move towards you. Then on their next turn, they're all going to effectively be able to attack every one of you, with the exception of O'Hare. Um so Leon and Horian, um, you're going to get surrounded by three apiece. Uh, and then Katrak uh, and Sophie, uh, you're going to see two of them are going to surround you. And then a couple more are staying back, trying to like, like avoid the fire at this point. Um, so, okay. So this is going to be upper hand uh, on Leon. Uh, Leon... You're going to take... What's your AC, Leon? Eight. Um, all right. You, you dodge the crit, but I can do... I can do five points of damage to you. So you take five points of damage. Uh, okay. Then, so as you're just getting harassed by all of them, same thing's going to happen to Horian. Uh, what's, your, what's your AC there, Horian? Uh, without my shield, it is a nine. Okay. They will be able to get to nine. They have plus one on their hit. I didn't roll it on that. And it's going to be a crit. So we're going to roll a crit injury for you. Can you roll two? I have the tough as nails advancement. Of course. Uh, also, by so the way, so. exertion can be used to have me re-roll shit too. So you can always okay. spend one point of grip to have me re-roll a die as well. Um, all right, so oh, this... actually, I have to spend a point of grip for you to roll two, so never mind on that. because I only Okay, two well, the first one was against the odds on the next observation check. As one of them smashes your face, and you feel a scrape down your eye. Um, but uh, you are... That's that's not that bad. It's better than the other one. Um, and yeah. then on... Two of them are going to surround both Sophie and Katrak, but they because it's not they're not ganging up with so many, they're not going to get uh, upper hand. So first one's going to be on Sophie... Uh, Sophie, what's your AC? Sorry, nine. Uh, nine. They will be able to crit you with four plus two plus. No, I'm sorry, I can't add six plus two plus one is nine, and they do four damage to you. Okay. Uh, then on to cat track. Uh, eight. Eight. I didn't mean to click that. Whoops. They're gonna be able to. Do, they're gonna be able to do two damage to you, cat track. Okay. And none of them come for O'Hare. Um, that is their. That is both their turns. Uh, I will say, um, O'Hare, you can go next. How far am I from the mouth of the cave? You can get there in one move action. So what is at the front of the cave? Uh, you remember that there was like a lentil opening, like there, like it was reinforced with some kind of old beam. Uh, that was that was reinforcing the cave opening itself. You also remember that there was like broken tools and pots and stuff and crates that were outside as well. Okay, I'm unhappy for the first time in a long time. I'm gonna get ahead of him. Okay, move action to get to the front of the now. Now you're outside the cave, looking back in. How sturdy does this cave entrance look? Uh, I mean, it's been open this way for centuries, for at least years, so it's decently sturdy. It doesn't mean that you couldn't try to do something. I would like to try and cave in the mouth of the cave. What do you have to help so you? I have a short sword, I have a, duel, I have a dueling sword, crossbow, throwing dart, basic armor, I have rope. Okay. Uh, I mean... Wait, you're trying to trap us in the cave? Yeah, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have torch, ration, chalk, book of luggage, but you know the normal stuff. So okay, I mean, to... like, so how would you how, explain to me how you would be trying to cave in the opening? I guess I would try and take my. I'm ahead. I have some time. They're being attacked. I would try and take my rope, put it around. I guess 
a weak point in the mouth of the cave and try and pull on the... Uh, you realize you're a halfling, right? You're not Horian. <laughs> oh, I can try by a, by a system of pulleys. Um, I would <laughs> try to uh, do the best I can to either pull on it or hack away at it in some way, shape, or form. I want to try and cave this motherfucker in because they just murdered a bunch of innocent people, sentient beings, and they're being corrupted by these goat heads mm -hmm. that clearly are insane. No one's actually died yet. We haven't killed anyone yeah. yet. Yeah. You set them on fire. They're on fire. Um, we set one person on fire. Yeah, I'm sure the rest of the hair won't catch. So this is going to, like, your plan of trying to, like, throw the rope up there and pull down, that sounds like it's going to take a little time. Uh, so yeah, what I'm, what what I'm first going to say is, so what we're going to do is roll an observation check to see if you can find a weak point in the kind of the lintel opening that might be worth looping some rope around. What's observation? 2d6s and you need to hit a 9, no bonus added. Okay. Bye. You find a place that you think is uh, that you think will work. Can you, I spend two will? No, I have two will. Can I spend a will to re-roll? You mean a grip? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, so you want... So spend a grip per die that you want to re-roll. So if you want to do, do one d6 re-roll, spend one grip. If you want to re-roll both, spend two grip. Damn it. Okay. Uh, you find a spot that you think will work, and you, you throw a... A uh, you know you throw your rope up around it and you start to you start to pull. Um, roll a against the odds brawn check. Oh. Natural twenty. Damn it. Okay, and you it's pull. About what I would expect from a halfling. And it just doesn't seem to doesn't seem to work. We have Jeremy. We have in fact uh, set a couple hair puppets on fire, and now Justin is trying to collapse a. A cave on top of his teammates. Uh, okay. Uh, and they have about 10 seconds to get out of this cave before it explodes. Started murdering sentient beings for no reason because a bunch of flaming skulls told them to. Psychopaths is what I got here. They're goat skulls. Uh, who's going next, O'Hare? You have to pick somebody from the group because the, uh, the puppets have already gone. I will say um, Katrak. All right, Katrak, you've got the baby. You're running. Running away. Okay. And yep. you can just use burn both. I'm your... assuming I can't like light a torch and throw behind me while I'm carrying it. Like um, my uh, assumption is that that's too much. I mean, like you w we're, you have an arm that's going to be carrying the baby, I assume, right? She's going to take the torch and light it off. You have a I torch. Had, I had the torch in the other hand. You can throw the, the torch, torch out and as run. We're going in. Okay. So this is what I'll say. I'll do that. Okay, so you turn and throw, throw a witch, well, roll a roll a witch check, but uh, do it at against the odds because you are carrying a baby in one hand. Okay, uh, that's nice. upper hand. You clicked upper hand against the odds. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> do you guys know that if you're carrying a baby, it makes it easier to throw shit? Yeah, it's great. Uh, you I, throw uh, it back. A... Yeah, if you want to re-roll something. Can I spend a grip? Go ahead. Yeah, I do. Uh, so you want to re-roll probably the two. So go ahead and roll d6. You rolled a six. six. So uh, unfortunately, Yolo. unfortunately, it's it's against the odds, which means one of those sixes are dropped. But the bright side is that you do add the six and the three together. That's a success. So you do you are able to throw it back, and it does. You 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 see the torch hurl over top of Leon's head and smash point blank into one of these hair puppets that are chasing after you uh, and they burst the okay, mother burst. whose baby you stole yeah she'll give me the one okay uh, and then you use your movement to catch up to where O'Hare is like grr, grr. now you don't know that he's trying to trap don't. everybody you just see him doing it, it very he very easily mm -hmm. could just be trying to, to cover your escape I said let's not or trying to it. climb up on the mountain yeah he's I don't know what <laughs> yeah, uh, we can't meta. Yeah, we, don't, so, we don't know. Nope. So nope. yeah, so. that's why I did the torch thing. Okay, so because I'm not. You're right next to him now, at the mouth at the opening to the cave. Who do you want to go next? You got Leon, uh, Leon Horian, and Sophie left to go. I'll, I'll do escape here. Do you want to just do? If you do both move actions, you can get out of the cave for free even though i'm in combat or engaged oh that's a good point sorry yeah um because there's three around you make an escape check i should have actually had catrack do that too um but that's fine 
Um, I'll say because you guys are being ganked up on, I'll have Leon and Horian do it, but Sophie and Catrick weren't ganked up on. So, Leon, go ahead and roll a, uh, an escape test. Wits check to get out. Okay. Uh, so, Wits, you need a nine. Something. And don't forget, by the way, if anyone's low on grip or low on health, you can always take injuries or take afflictions and stuff, and that can reset some of your things. So, if you're worried about like going down, then there's always that option. All right, I'll just do the wits check real quick. Okay, so, okay. So I'll have to re-roll, uh, no, both for two grip. Okay, so re-roll the, the two. Yeah, just many grip, one grip per die. All right. Okay, there you're go. good. Yeah, you managed to deftly get away. Maybe the, as the torch comes over top, you duck. They get kind of distracted by getting hit by the torch, and you use that distraction to run. Um who's going next and you are out of the cave you are past Catrack. you are past o'hare o'hare is still carrying her the, the baby o'hare is trying to pull down the mouth of the cave or something like that you think uh so you got horian and sophie left uh let's do horian okay horian uh what are we gonna do you're surrounded by three of these things they're ganging up on you yeah so would i could i feasibly like empty the oil out of my bullseye lantern and like i'm assuming there's enough points of fire that i could kind of like swing the lantern around and spray oil across i feel like you could probably just swing it and just smash it and it might kind of explode with fire or something yeah, like that yeah, yeah. roll that an attack too. roll an attack with uh with upper hand uh so yeah 10 is good um and so this uh, an explosion of fire happens and it's gonna I'll, I'll see. I'm gonna roll d6 um, to see how many it hits. It's gonna hit. It's a it was a d3 technically. It's gonna hit two of the three that are on you, and so two of them just burst into flames right now, and they're freaking out. The third one didn't quite get hit with the spray. Um, so that's your action. And then can I? Yeah. Then can I also make a start for the mouth of the cave? Yeah, and because you just set them on fire before you left, you can go ahead and roll your escape with upper hand. As now they seem to be distracted. Okay, that's gonna be a miss. It's a fail. I'll uh, spend one point of grip to re-roll okay. the re-roll two. the two. Okay, go for yeah. it. So you just need a three or higher, which you got. That's <laughs> exactly what you needed. That's the second time that happened, and you get away as they are again confused. And so you are right, right now, just to make sure everyone's clear. Horian, Catrack, and O'Hare are all right underneath the lip, the opening of the cave. O'Hare is trying to pull down like the the beam, the lintel that uh, that that's kind of keeping it up. Leon is outside. He is out of the actual place. Sophie, you are up next automatically. You get to go two times in a row. You do have two of these things on you, but because I already set the precedent with Catrack not having the roll, I'm not going to make you roll uh, to escape. But we'll say because you're not getting ganged up on, you don't have to roll. But you have you have, uh, you have effectively two moves and two actions. So one move action, then another move and an action. What do you want to do? Uh, I want to, because uh, I am holding a torch, so I want to light it. Okay. And then um, I want to hit the two that are like in front of me, just like just like to try arc, and just show this. Yeah. Okay. So this but, will... like I don't want to let go of it yet. Okay. Uh, so you can roll an attack with um, with upper hand. So three d six, so four d six if I have upper hand. Yes, indeed. Okay. Oh my god, that's a terrible roll. Uh, you get rid yes, of the one. Uh, do you have any bonus? Uh, what would uh, the torch's wits? It's one. wits. Okay, so that plus one actually means you will hit because four plus four plus one is nine. It does mean you're only going to do one damage to them, but it does. It, we'll say you catch one of them on fire. They okay. don't do a ton of damage, but they are caught on fire. Uh, you yeah, have a move. Just... You have a move if you want to do a move. Yeah. So then I'm going to move like up towards the mouth a little bit. Okay. And then my second action is I want to throw my torch in. And then also move out more. Okay, go ahead and throw. Roll this normal, I'm going to say. Normally you get an upper hand uh, for using the, the fire, but because you're, like, trying to throw it back, mm -hmm. it's gonna we'll say cancel it out. It's so normal. Not, 11 is good. And so this thing lands, and you're going to see it's going to catch a few. So there's all sorts of fire now that's spreading amongst these different puppets. Uh, and then your last action 
your move is to to move out of the cave towards where Leon yeah. is. Okay, so now yeah. Leon and Sophie are out of the cave. It's a new round. Uh, Sophie Sophie went first. You can pick anybody. And don't forget that the last person to go effectively gets two turns in a row. So yeah. who do you want to go next? Um, I figured I'd get the puppets out of the way. We'll do the puppets, resolve that. Okay. Or should I pick a person? It's up to you. I mean, it's up to you. If you just there's two people outside there's three people that are still inside the lip of the cave and then there's a horde of there's like at least a dozen some of them caught on fire sure but there's still a dozen of those puppets inside okay I'll if do they Catrack. go now they will be able to catch up with hori and catrack and O'Hare. true okay so i'll do catrack i'll do leon uh running 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 okay so catrick do you just run outside at this point just turn and run all right who do you yep. want to go next uh, Leon? Leon, you are next. Uh, I'll stand at the cave entrance and hack any of the things that come by. You're going to stay there with a weapon ready and attack them if they, they chase after you? Yeah. Okay. I want to reiterate, there's a horde of them that are going to be chasing you oh. down. <laughs> it's not going to be one or two. There's, there's, there's at least a dozen, and O'Hare saw more that weren't kind of in that little engagement, so... I mean, it's it's pretty uh, clear that this is overwhelming. All right, I'll just keep running. Then. Okay, so you run outside. Um, who's going next, Horian or O'Hare or the puppets? Uh, Hori. Okay, Horian, you're up. All right, I'll move to get out of the cave. Um, and I guess I wouldn't know what O'Hare is trying to do. Would I, uh, could I make some kind of like? insight check to see if I think he's trying to like climb up or if he's trying to pull something down. It or seems, I, guess, like, I, I, I would say it math? seems pretty clear that he's trying to, to, to collapse the cave opening. Okay. So then um, I'll run to O'Hare and I'll like pat him on the head and be like, that's not a bad idea. Let me, let me, and I'll try and uh, pull it down as well and okay. trap them in there at the fire. Roll a brawn. I'll say roll a brawn test. Um, but I'm not going to give you, um, I'll, I'll, since you're helping each other out, I'll do upper hand. But that cancels out the against the odds of how difficult this is, and he may he didn't pass his observation check. So, you the two of you managed to pull it down. <laughs> the 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 little kind of the lentil opening cracks a bit amazingly, and then everything starts to tumble down. Uh, the two of you want to stay here inside, or do you want to try to dive out? I'll dive out for sure. Uh, and then I'll pass my turn to O'Hare and let him okay, wrap it up. So which check to dive out will treat it like an escape. Uh, and if you if you fail, right. you probably take it. You take some damage. O'Hare, what do you want to do? Uh, I'll dive out. Okay. Um, O'Hare, you actually you actually have your turn, so I, I won't necessarily make you make you have to do it. Uh, actually, yeah, roll a witch check because it is kind of collapsing on you. But I'll give you upper hand since you were here first. Never mind. You rolled a twelve. You're good to go. The two of you go diving out. I want to stress that no one knows the motivation behind why O'Hare did that, but everything goes collapsing down. You see a couple of the hair puppets try to push past this, this cave opening, but they get caught by this huge chunk of rock or a beam that falls on top of them. You can see they just get smothered in one after the other. They all just collapse underneath the granite and the rock. And then after a couple moments, the entire cave opening has now completely collapsed. No way in, no way out. None of the hair puppets make it out. All of you are outside. The ghosts in your heads are freaking out right now uh, about how, well, that's just ruining everything now. Very upset. But I think we're going to stop there. Because it's almost, yeah, we're almost almost three hours at this point. We're going to stop here. And we'll pick this up with part three, which will probably be the final part, I think. Uh, so part three, maybe next week, if we can get everyone together, we'll see. Uh, but we'll stop there. All right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Harry just looks like he had a brilliant idea. Right? Yeah. Horian's mm -hmm. like, hey, that was a really good idea. Oh, yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm proud of you. Uh, okay. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and close this stuff down. Thank you for everybody who hung out tonight and gave some bits and things. Uh, Justin, you do some streaming. Tell people uh, tell people where they can find you and what you you stream because I know you do some stuff. Uh, Twitch TV slash Yahoofa. And uh, I do a lot of World of Warcraft, but me and my boy Derek right there are about to go on an adventure to become the best Apex players of all time. And uh, It's true. It's very true. I've been told it helps raise my stonks. 
I don't know if that's correct. What's um, a stonk? I don't, I don't really know. Very Let's get home with my stonks. Okay. So. Fair enough. Uh, okay, then for the rest of us, you can find us here, twitch.tv slash the lollygaggers. If you're watching this later on on YouTube, come check us out on Twitch. Follow us on Twitch. Uh, we got lots of stuff over uh, on our YouTube page as well. All of our past uh, actual plays from a variety of different games. You can check us out. Uh, let's see. Uh, the next live game we have, Melissa and I will be uh, tomorrow morning. We'll be on Free League Publishing. Uh, like I think it's like one central where we're going to be playing um, Forbidden Lands uh, on, let's see, on Monday. Also on Free League Publishing, you can find us playing Vason. And then next week, we're going to hopefully try to finish this game either on Friday or Saturday. Not sure yet. So catch us on tw- catch me on Twitter and you can kind of track it there. Um, but that's it for now. Just follow the channel, hang out, and we'll have more games up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw a raid out to some of our friends. I think Defenders started, but they're not. Yep, they're up. I don't know why they're not showing up on my... There they are. Okay. Oh, prediction. So, yes. How did, the, how did the prediction thing go? Like, is there... So, I have to choose an outcome, yes or no. No one did died. We kill? No one died. No one died. So... I, I won. Long is giving somebody... <laughs> 24,920 channel point. Okay. Woo! So how does that work? You have that? You you you're you're working with I'm that? I'm completing it now. Okay. I just got 12,000. <laughs> yeah, nice. there was there's two of you, so it could split the that's pot. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I like that. That's that's, that's fun. Funny. <laughs> that's that's pretty no. fun. I guess that makes sense because I do have infinity channel points, so I guess I can't that's get true. on the betting because that wouldn't be fair. I would definitely control the market. Uh, okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put us thanks on everybody the watching. end screen, and we're gonna raid the fenders, our friends over there. Uh, but thanks for everyone hanging out. Thanks for those of you who threw out some bits, uh, gift subs, all that kind of stuff. Uh, lots of fun, and we'll catch you next week uh, on the same channel. And come watch Melissa and I in the next couple of days as we're on the Free League Publishing channel playing other games. So, yeah. good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Ninety nine.